everybody. How are you today? So I'm a little late getting to the table compared to other reactors. There's been a lot of reactions being done today. Very busy day in the reaction community because Foodie Beauty is back. And she did a live stream called, is it Iftar? If I'm saying that wrong, please forgive me. Iftar and story time. And what did she do during the story time? Did she come back to us and show us a more modest and mild tempered way of thinking, way of being? Oh no, no, this is foodie we're talking about. <laughs> mild temper who? Modesty what? No, no, foodie doesn't operate like that. Now our foodie, she came on camera and of course she ate a meal, a very big meal. And then she decided to complain about certain reaction channels and give her opinions on different people. You know, stuff that she's done before. Ramadan is going on right now. This is a time for all the Muslim people for works of charity, for prayer, such and such, uh, and things like that. But Foodie is not taking this time to become a better person or do self-reflection or acts of charity. She's just being the same old Foodie. So I wanted to react to her live stream as well as stuff that I found on Twitter and also her community post because she's been going off in her community post and not in a good way, just continuing to be hateful. So why don't we just start with that? I think that would be good. Since that's not gonna take very long, it'll be very brief. Okay, so guess who she's talking about in her community post? Of course, it's French Fry Girl, of course it is. Her number one target, whenever she's mad, frustrated, stressed out, bored, she goes after Frenchie. Foodie, Ramadan is going on. Should you be doing this, ma'am? Should you? No, no, you really, really shouldn't. And what she has to say about Frenchie is, hey, are you going to do a three hour live stream addressing the blanket covering the hovel? You're hanging out in hypocrite. You sure spent a lot of time picking apart my Kuwait apartment. So going after Frenchie again during Ramadan, at a time when she should be abstaining from hateful words and hateful thoughts and hateful behavior, she's still continuing to do hateful things and think hateful things. And she said something interesting in this post, as brief as it was. Look right here. You sure spend a lot of time picking apart my, my Kuwait apartment. My. There's the word my, as opposed to our apartment. If you are married to someone or you're in a relationship with someone, even if you're not, if you're in a roommate situation with someone, you would normally say our apartment or our home. You wouldn't say my. You only say my when you're the only person living there. Isn't that true, foodie? All of us that react to you, we've been saying for the longest, it's your place. You live there. And anything that might belong to Sala, it's just basically staged. It's all staged. It looks like you're the only one living there. And anything that belongs to Sala, that's just put there to make it seem like he's actually there when he's actually not. He disappears for a long time. He comes home at three in the morning. So the rumor is, He's living somewhere else. He comes to visit you when you guys have to do stuff, but he's not there full time. He just does what he needs to do with you. And then he goes back to perhaps his parents' house or another place where he might live. 
But isn't it interesting that while you were going after FFG, you said my apartment, mine, mine. You're giving us more confirmation, foodie, that you live alone. I sure do love the way you tell on yourself because you do it a lot. All we have to do is just wait for you to tell us things and we find stuff out. We don't have to do much digging on you. You take out a shovel and you dig out dirt on yourself. And I love that for you. So, yeah, guys, she said my apartment. And in regards to you going after FFG and where she lives. I'm not going to speak for Frenchie because Frenchie does a great job by herself speaking for herself. My opinion is this. Foodie, listen up. Listen carefully. Are you in a position to go after anybody else's dwellings? Whether they live in a shed or a home or a trailer or a motel room. Are you in any position to go after anyone when you are essentially homeless? The place where you're staying, I'm pretty sure that's not in your name. I'm pretty sure it's in Sala's name and you're just staying there. I don't think your name is on the lease. You don't have a home to call your own. You can't even say I have a Motel 6 room with my name on the ledger and I've got a room key and I can leave and enter anytime I want. You are essentially locked in a box and you can't leave. And even if you did, where would you go? You don't know your way around. And so far as I know, you are not fluent in say Arabic. So if you went somewhere, would you know where you were going? Would you have anyone that you could talk to? Probably not. So there you are putting down everybody else's living situation, whatever it may be, trying to throw shade at people because they live in places and perhaps they're happy and they're satisfied. But according to you, we are all set to a certain standard with our living. And at the same time, you really don't have a permanent place to live. You gave up the villa and all of its luxuries you turn it into a landfill and you move to Kuwait to live in a very, very small apartment, which is your choice. Absolutely your choice. But you live simply. And how hypocritical is it that you live simply and in a humble way? And yet if other people are living simply and perhaps in a humble way, you're trying to throw shade at them. I mean, make it make sense. How is it okay for you to live in a very simple, humble way, and yet it's not okay for other people? And, and trying to make living in a simple way a bad thing. It's, it's really not. Okay, here's another one. Hmm, change your fries to lies thumbnail worth the watch. I don't, I've not watched this video. I'm not going to watch this video. But as you can see, Foodie's been on one today. She has been on one today. So let's let's do the timeline. This post about Frenchie was two hours ago. Okay. Here's another one also from two hours ago. This one was three hours ago. So three hours ago, she made this, this post. And then she waited an hour and then th did these two. Foodie Beauty, calling out your vile blank is not raging rage pig you have no business talking about ramadan when you don't have a soul period well foodie don't make me sit here for the rest of this react video and call you all the way out for all the things that you've done wrong as a newly reverted muslim woman all the qualities that muslim people uh, have or try to have all of the values that they have you have yet to show even one good thing. You're not a modest person. You are not trying to have good thoughts or good actions. You're, you're not trying to be kind to anybody. You swear all the time. You are gluttonous and gluttony is haram, mom. It's, it's absolutely haram, but there you go. 
you get on camera, you eat and eat and eat. That's haram. You, stuffing yourself is haram. It is. It absolutely is. Just gluttony is a big no-no. You are not big on personal hygiene and cleanliness is very valued there. It's valued everywhere, but it's valued there too. I mean, you just make up your own rules as far as what you consider to be a Muslim woman. And you do it so you can give yourself room to be vile. And you can say, nobody can judge what I do. Well, you decided to come on YouTube and put yourself out there in the way that you have. And, and when you put yourself on a public forum, people are free to say what they want and what their opinions about what your actions and your words are. And she made this post four days ago. So that's her community post. So it's Ramadan and here's Foodie going after FFG yet again. Little personal note, Foodie. I think your channel is going down the tubes. I think a long time ago, you ran out of ideas for interesting content you're known for drama. You're known for shock. And you absolutely pushed it to the limit of topics that were shocking, actions that were shocking, looking for anything that was offensive. You went for the shock value. You kept raising the bar on yourself to the point where you could not raise it anymore. You literally hit your own glass ceiling. And once you hit it, you could not go any higher. I mean, what else could you say? And what else could you do to shock us? We've seen parts of your body that really are just meant for, say, an OnlyFans crowd. We've seen all your naughty bits. You've gotten high on camera. You've done rugs. You've been completely zonked out of your head. You've discussed shocking and triggering topics. You've been in as, as offensive as you could possibly be. What, what else is left? What else is left? You're in a corner of your own making. How do you get out? How you get out is by stop being lazy and actually making content for your channel. But I seriously doubt you'll do that. You want to know why? Because I think it's a game to you. I honestly think it's a game. I think it's a game to you to see what you can do on YouTube and make money on it and do the least amount of work. I think you get a big kick out of come on on camera and you just eat a meal and talk a bunch of nonsense and you giggle because you make a certain amount per live stream. And you're just doing what you would normally do if there were not a camera there, but you're always looking for ways to make money where you don't have to be creative. And you don't have to work. You don't have to do anything. You're just looking for ways to get out of work. Well, if you put out nothing, you get nothing. And if you get nothing, you can't complain because there was no place at the table for you when it came time for the big rewards, can you? You reap what you sow. And if you don't get out in the field and work, you get no harvest. Absolutely none. And if all the seeds that you plant are rotten, putrid, evil, you will get a bitter harvest. And it'll be hard to swallow. And you'll have no one but yourself to blame. Because it's not the reactor's fault. We are not in charge of your content. We don't tell you what to do every day that you live stream or you do a video, you decide it's not up to us. We just react to what you do. We just give our opinions, but you're the one with the main content. And if you're over there complaining and saying the reaction channels are taking your views, I think you even know that that's wrong, that that's a lie. I think you know, we're not taking anything from you. 
You're taking from yourself by refusing to work, by refusing to be creative, by refusing to put some pride into yourself and into your content. You're making your own destiny happen. It's not up to us. If your content were interesting, if it were creative, people would go on your channel and stay on your channel. People go on the reaction channels to be able to keep up with the foodie beauty soap opera and they can watch it and it's tolerable because you hanging out on live stream for two, three, four hours and you're eating and you're talking about the same four or five subjects, it'll make your ears bleed. People want to keep up with this soap opera, but they don't want to be bored to death. Also, foodie, if you're concerned about views and you're concerned about money, then stop deleting your live streams. That's just stupid. You take money out of your own pocket. You take a lot of it out of your pocket. How many live streams do you dirty delete a month? How much money do you think that is in a single month that you give up? We are not vultures and we're not thieves. You rob your own pocket. You decide to do that. And when you decide to do that, when you decide to do a live stream for say two hours, and then you quickly delete it, you're basically handing over free real estate to the reaction channels. And we work our magic and we make it entertaining. And anybody on your side that wants to see the stream, that unfortunately they could not be there when it originally aired, they have to come over and watch it through us. You're basically forcing things in that direction, aren't you? You wanna make more money, do streams that stay up on your channel Stop robbing your own pocket and stop blaming the reaction channels if you're losing money. Because at the end of the day, we both know who is responsible for your channel going down. And it's not us. It's you. So let's get out of the, of the community posts. And let's go straight to Twitter. Because I found stuff on Twitter. Okay, and there is my Twitter for those who are interested. And this is from Miss Mary Cab saying she picked the wrong filter from the app store. Uh, and Chicken Pickle is saying, What's wrong with her face? Yeah, everybody's been asking about that for a couple of weeks. I honestly don't know what's wrong with Foodie's face. A lot of people have speculated that she has an abscess tooth or something. But if she had an abscess tooth, she'd be in a great deal of pain. She might have trouble talking because the swelling on one side of her face is very significant. And yet she's talking just fine. I have no idea what's going on here. Is it a filter glitch? Is it perhaps uh, she's getting bigger and bigger and the fat that she is accumulating, some of it is just ending up on her face. They say that all of us, we don't have perfect features. Like one, like one arm might be a little bit longer than the other and you just don't know, or one foot is bigger than the other. Uh, the same might apply to the face. Maybe it's just not noticeable for some people because uh, you know, being of a smaller size, but with foodie, her gaining weight so rapidly, maybe it's just showing up more on one side of her face than the other. I really don't know. This is from Massimo. On a California beach, you can find an entire spectrum of pebbles colors and compose something highly satisfying, like this creation from Emily Blinko made in May 2015. That's actually quite pretty very creative. So I guess all of those pebbles were found on the beach. I love the color palette. Uh, this is from Tofu saying, why is she not concerned about her cheek? 
it keeps growing and growing while the other one stays the same. Yeah, I, I, I'm scratching my head over that one, Tofu. I have no idea. I thought at first it was a filter glitch. Maybe the filters were glitching. Is is there an app out there where you can just simply filter one side of your face and not the other? I don't know. Might be worth checking into some research. Is there a filter that you can use on your phone where only half of your face gets filtered? And maybe the foodie has found this app and she's using it to generate people talking because foodie... She does that. She's always looking for ways to get people talking. So has she found a face app that only filters one side of your face, knowing that people are going to notice, knowing that they're going to say something just to get people curious about her and talking? I'm going to have to look into it. Okay, this is from Tweety saying, here comes the Gruffalo. <laughs> yeah, this is from Foodies Live which we're gonna cover. D Angry Scott says, back to the same old live streams on the platform she doesn't want to be on and doesn't need to make money from anymore, huh, Foodie? Yeah, Foodie said she was leaving YouTube. So she said she hated YouTube and she was gonna go over on TikTok. But here she is back on YouTube. And those of us that react to her, we knew she was gonna come back. She makes money here. She's not built up on any other platform. Where else would she go? She can't rely on her husband to take care of her. She's taking care of him. We knew she'd be back. You know, she if her plan was to starve out the reaction channels, she can't do that without starving herself too. And the advantage with the reaction channels is we can do anything. We can react to anybody. We, there's a variety of people to cover. And if we don't feel like reacting, we can do video game content. We can do ambiance videos. We can do humorous videos and parodies. We're not just limited to one thing. Foodie is limited to one thing. This is it. Y'all are looking at it. So if her plan is to starve us out, disappear for a while to punish us, teach us a lesson, not going to work, foodie. Because every day that you don't live stream, you're not making money. This is your only source of income. How can you punish us without punishing yourself too? You disappear, we can find things to do. The longer you stay offline, the less money you're going to have in pocket and the smaller your paycheck's going to be. So you make that decision on your own. How big or how small your paycheck is going to be at the end of the month. Okay, so I've seen this clip floating around. I didn't know what it was for. Uh, this is from your adjustication saying, so if the Beezer spray isn't available for purchase, how did the person who's not Foodie Beauty get it? Because it was you taking that dumb pick, wasn't it, Chantal? Yeah, you know what? I did hear a while back that Murad's perfume company, when people went to the page and they went to buy something, that the company would take the money, but there was no way to put in your shipping information so that when you bought it, they would know where to ship it. And then Chantal came online and said, well, they don't ship anywhere. It's all local. So if it's all local, how would this person get the perfume? Because this perfume was just put out, was it not? The Beezer perfume just happened. So who is this person in the picture, foodie? It looks like you. It really looks like you. It looks like you, ma'am. Why would anybody buy Beezer perfume? And something else about the perfume, just a word. There's a reason that if you buy a product, no matter what it is, 
there are laws in place about the safety of the product. There are laws, there are restrictions in place for a reason to protect the consumers from getting any contact with something that might be harmful to them. Somebody pointed out that the Beezer perfume, there's no list of ingredients. There's no list of ingredients. Where's the list of ingredients on the perfume bottle, foodie? They should be there. People need to know this. That way, if there's something in the perfume that someone is allergic to, they can read the ingredients and know that that ingredient is in there and know not to spray it on them. But the Beezer perfume, there's no anything on there. There's nothing to show that it's clean, that it's safe, that it's tested, that it follows regulation. There's no ingredients list. There's nothing. There's just a cheap label stuck on a plastic bottle. There are people that make perfumes and lipsticks and makeup, and there's a whole lot of hurdles they have to jump through. A lot of regulations as far as where the product is made and the warehouses are safe and the working conditions are safe and that everything is hygienic. There's a whole lot they got to go through. And it sometimes takes weeks, but just out of up in the blue, you've got a perfume and there's no ingredients on the bottle. Anything could be in there, y'all. Anything. I wouldn't trust it. I would not trust it. I wouldn't just spray whatever stuff on my skin, not knowing what was on the bottle, not knowing if it was safe, but that's what they're doing over there. Just anything to make a quick buck. But who's this in the picture, foodie? Who's that person? Uh, this is from Hidden Truths saying my apartment. So Sala really doesn't live there then. No, I don't think he does. I don't think he does at all. Okay, now this is scary. This is from Perfectly Imperfect and Queen Natter El Shami. Look at that. Look how similar. Look how similar. Wow. And you know what I'm focusing on the most? It's not the facial features, like the cheeks or anything. I'm focusing on the eyes. Both Sala and Pete have the same, my spirit has been sucked dry look in the eyes. Like they, they, there's no spark in there anymore. Like they are just absolutely just spent, exhausted, done. Isn't it amazing that every guy that gets near Chantal they have this same look or they develop that same look. Natter had that look in the eyes. Poor BB, he had the look in the eyes. Isn't it amazing? You got four different men who do not know each other. And if you put the pictures of them side by side, they all get that look. And the only thing they have in common is Chantal, being close to Chantal. She literally sucks this souls out of their bodies. Uh, this is from Milk Tea. Milk Tea says, my rages passed. Chantal 104, 2023. Madam, your rages were three days ago and you're currently calling people pigs in your community tab. Happy Ramadan. Yeah, not the thing you want to do during Ramadan. Even if it wasn't Ramadan, you're supposed to be a newly reverted Muslim woman. Should you be acting like that? Should you be talking like that? No, you absolutely shouldn't. Uh, this is from Kim Impossible. This is from the new live saying, so fat blank, tell us again that you do not say that FFG lives in a Motel 6. You say it so much, it just rolls off your tongue, you extra large humpback whale. Tell us how you really feel, Kim. I'm telling you. This is from the new live. So I'm going to play this clip because Chantal has said the Motel 6 comment, she only said it once. Although it's been proved, she has said it many, 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 many times over. But here she is saying it again. 
Let's watch. Whoa. She puts on this persona like a big tough chick, but you know she can't say what she says in real life to anyone's face. Literally, she was so nice. Like, she would never, 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 never. I know it. The bed that BBJ is laying on was her dog bed for the two she put down. Ew. And then she had that smoke, the blanket with the cigarette burn, her Motel 6 couch. BBJ doesn't look happy to me. And she looks like uh, she's obviously chain smoking in her house. Does she not chain smoke on live streams? That's animal abuse. Number one. Number one. Foodie. And I hate to repeat myself, but it seems like your ears are full of cotton or something because you just don't listen. Frenchie has said BBJ is not with her. BBJ lives with the sister-in-law and her brother. I repeat, BBJ does not live with her. She lives with a sister-in-law and her brother. French fry girl pays for the vet bills, pays for her care. She takes BBJ to the vet. I've just recently heard she's taking her to the vet twice next week. So the sister-in-law and the brother have BBJ. And BBJ is thriving. She's thriving. She's getting herself a Gucci collar. Soon she's going to have a catio. She's doing well. She's brushed. She's beautiful. She's got a spark in her eye that I haven't seen in the longest. She's doing well. Number two. You, madam, have nothing to say about hotel rooms and motel rooms. You... Miss, I make ten, twenty thousand dollars a month on YouTube. What were you doing and where were you spending your time with Natter? Let me remind you of you've forgotten. You were sneaking off and seeing Natter in the dirtiest, sleaziest, cheapest, grossest motel rooms I have ever seen. Motels that had horrible reviews. Horrible. I've actually covered them in the past in reaction videos. I remember very clearly one reviewer leaving this review about one of the motels you were staying in. They said the place was so bad. They were someone, they were a hiker, and they checked in for the night because there was a nasty storm. And the place was so bad and filled with bugs that they slept on an emergency blanket on the floor. And they left the emergency blanket on the floor when they left. They couldn't wait to get out of it. It was so skeezy. Imagine someone who makes between ten dollars to $20,000 a month on YouTube sneaking around and sleeping in and rolling around in the filth of a dirty, disgusting, sleazy, scuzzy motel room. Not at the Hyatt, not at the Holiday Inn, not even at a Motel 6. Finding some hole in the wall, out of the way place, germs everywhere, cooties everywhere. That's how you and Natter did. And you think you have the right to judge anybody about where they live when you were rolling around in filth at places that would have made the Motel 6 room look like a mansion? You sure you want to go there? You sure? And let's not also forget, let me remind you about how you were at the trap house. I mean, the crack house. I mean, Natter's house. How disgusting that place was. You'd be over there for weeks at a time. You want you basically moved in there. Remember that? Leaving your cats behind for weeks to stay there? And now look at you. You're in a little bitty box. All alone, no car, can't go anywhere because you're locked in. You're going to have fun 
when there's a rolling blackout in summer, you're going to have a lot of fun. If you got to crank that AC down to like 18 degrees, just so you won't sweat to death, mama, wait, wait until that rolling blackout. And you're sitting there in that little bitty box. And you can't even open the window. And you can't get out. And the temperature is starting to rise in that house. Oh, you are going to cook. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're going to be cooking and begging for that Motel 6 room. Yes, you will. You'll be saying, I wish I had a Motel 6 room with the air conditioning. I don't even have that over here. Yep. Yeah. So you might want to shut your mouth about anybody else's living situation about where Frenchie lives, about where Kaya lives, about where Gary lives, about where anybody lives. You're essentially homeless right now. You don't really have a permanent place to live. You're just bouncing around from place to place because you decided you did not want to do adulting anymore. You want to be removed from the responsibility of adulting. Well, this is what happens. You bounce around. You have no roots in the ground. You know, you just like a rolling stone. Enjoy that. Enjoy it. This is what you wanted. It's, it's amazing to me how a woman with no permanent home actually having the gall to try to shame anybody who might have a permanent home or semi-permanent home. No matter what it is, we have more solidarity where we live than where you do. Okay? Yeah. So just zip it, foodie. Zip it. Zip it about the Motel 6. Zip it. A Motel 6 room looks 10 times better and has more room than that little tiny box that you call a home. Okay? And I'm sure a Motel 6 room has a lot less fire hazards. I'm just saying. No exposed wires, okay? No washer and dryer in the wet room where you can get electrically shocked. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know? So here's Donna. Donna's saying, dang, y'all need to tone down the chemistry. It's just too much. So these are shots from the live. And it looks like Foodie got Sala a new t-shirt. Look at that. She loves her man so much here. Let me just get you a new t-shirt. She bought him a gift. How about that? He, <laughs> he looks so thrilled to be there. Look at him. He looks so checked out behind the eyes, doesn't he? He looks so checked out. Like, I wish I could be anywhere but here. And Pete's had that look. And Natter had that look. And BB. I mean, all the men around Chantal look like this. And it doesn't take long. This is from Queen Natural Shammy. They're the same picture. Yep, they sure are. Sala, you better watch it. This is going to be you in about a year, bro. <laughs> this, this is the aftermath of Chantal. And this is from Myung. Oh, look at the baby with the teddy bear. Look. That's a precious thing. Okay, this is from Holly Go Heavy, just like a subfolder issue. Foodie Beauty was balding before she had her hysterectomy. Genetic male pattern balding is an isolated thing. However, most common causes in women by genetic PCOS, total hysterectomy doesn't mean it stops androgen effects. PCOS can also cause insulin resistance leading to diabetes. Well, Foodie does have diabetes. The only one who would know for sure what's going on with Foodie's hair is a doctor but she refuses to go. But I'm just gonna throw my theory into the ring. What might be a reason why she's losing her hair? Um, she's had a hysterectomy. Uh, maybe her hormones are not quite all there, but my theory is I think some of it might have to do with her diet. 
if she's been eating nothing but fast food for the longest, that means she's not getting a lot of nutrition in her diet. And if your body is essentially starving, and yes, you can do that. You can eat fast food all day long, all night long, and still be starving. Because essentially fast food is, it's, it's garbage for your body. There's no nutrition. There's no vitamins. There's no minerals. There's no nothing. You know how the body's going to treat the fast food? It's going to say, thanks for the bag of garbage, but we're still hungry. We've still got a job to do down here, and you're not giving us what we need, so we're going to make you hungry in order to get it. So if foodie's diet is nothing but just junk, it's high sugars, high fats, carbs, salt, where's the nutrition in that? And if your body's starving, to protect itself, to keep itself going, it might cut off certain functions or slow down certain functions just so it can keep other things going more. It might affect your nails growing. It might affect your hair growth. Your body goes into self-protection mode. That might be the case with foodie. Like I said, only a doctor would know for sure what's going on with her hair. Okay, this is from Hype Girl and Basement Blank They She. It's <laughs> uh, Chantal in her Kuwait apartment. Yep, that's accurate. <laughs> She's in a box and not much space to move. Not much space to move at all. Like just locked in a box. Uh, Ghost Crab says, comes back after four days with the biggest left cheek she ever had. This is some kind of edema like Jen had in her last few months. Like I said, I don't know what's going on here. But whatever it is, Foodie is not concerned with it. If she were concerned, she could go to the doctor and get it checked. It looks very odd, but she should be concerned and go to a doctor if it's something serious. Uh, this is from Milk, Milk Tea, Milk, Milky Chai, sorry. Milk, I'm sorry, Milky Chai, not Milk Tea. Uh, Dee Dee, girl, karma already got your face. So anybody has been following the Chantal stuff, another little subfolder. I've been keeping an eye on Dee Dee and Natter. Dee Dee, look, I'm not being catty. I'm just being honest. You look awful. You look awful. You look haggard, ma'am. You look sick. You look absolutely sick. And by the way, the comments that you said about Gary Unfiltered, you were completely out of line. Completely out of line. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Even if you're completely mad at somebody and you don't like them and you hate them, there are just some things you don't say. And you said them. You said them. And a lot of people have the clips, what you said in regards to Gary's past trauma. And the more you say and the more you expose yourself, the more I have to question you who you are as a person i think in the beginning a lot of people thought that you were a victim i don't think you're a victim i really don't think so i think you're a little fire starter you're a little instigator and the things you said on that live stream about Gary, those things came out of your mouth. And I'm having a hard time just looking at you and you claim to be a victim of, I have to say, a bus. Y'all know what I'm talking about. How can somebody who has dealt with a bus speak that way? about somebody else's trauma. 
Why would they ever? How could they ever? When you say things like you said, Didi, it makes me wonder, are you really a victim? Because I don't think you are. But that's a discussion for another time. I've got my reasons. I definitely got my reasons, but that's a discussion for another time. Okay, so this is from Shenanigans. So speaking of Dee Dee and Natter, Natter, <laughs> he was trying to say he was going to go after Alex is shook. And all I'll say to that is, Natter, you don't have the power that you think you do, sir. You really don't have the power that you think you do. You really don't, sir. Uh, this is no cats, no life. <laughs> so when we went to a pet store to pick out a cat, and one cat's like, get down. I, I want to go home. <laughs> you get out of here. They need to pick me. I hope that both cats got adopted together. That would be the cutest thing. So here's a cat saying, get down. Look, they, they need to pick me. <laughs> Aw, that's a happy kitty. Happiness is a cat surrounded by cherry blossoms. That's the picture of contentment. And that's from why you should have a cat. Okay, now talk about a reason why no one should be with Natter. This is Dee Dee now. This was Dee Dee nine months ago. Now, almost a year ago, what a difference Natter can make in a woman's life. It seems like Natter has the same effect on women the Chantal has on men. He hooks up with a girl. She hooks up with a guy. They suck the life force out of them. And the next thing you know, they're looking quite scary. There's another pretty picture from why you should have a cat. Aw, look at the babies. And Chantal, in the time that she's been away from YouTube, she's she's been lurking in other people's chats because she can't stay away. So Foodie went over to No Madness Life and made herself known. All right, so that's it for the Twitter stuff. Let me just get out of here. Let's get on to the actual live stream. Okay, y'all ready? I know we're like almost an hour in, but it's been a while. There's a lot of stuff to go through. And if there's anything boring here, I'll just skip through it. You know how we do it here. There's no need to stay too long on this if there's nothing to talk about. So let's just see what Chantal has to say for herself. Brief amount of time you were here. Ugh. Oh, I don't know why she does this. She starts a live stream and immediately she's muting and, and covering up her. If you got something to say, why not do that before the live stream starts? Ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Hey, Gemini Gem. And by the way, Sala, I think I speak for all of us. You smoking your shisha the way that you do on live stream is rude. It's obnoxious, sir. May I request that if you got to smoke that thing, go in the other room. There's a bedroom. Go smoke in the bedroom if they're going to be that obnoxious. You're not smoking it like once every, say, five minutes. 
you wait like 14 seconds or so between pulls. Get a vape or something, bro. Seriously. That's like reverse ASMR. It's not giving me the good tingles. It's giving me the bad tingles. Cut it out. It's obnoxious. Hello, Bezos. <laughs> Go away, Sala. Sala is going to be smoking his shisha and playing game. 38. Oh, so he's smoking the shisha while he's playing video games. Sala, you're a moron. This is coming from a gamer, by the way. Listen, not that I care about you or your gaming system, but if you're supposed to be some kind of pro gamer, the last thing you want to do is smoke tobacco right next to your laptop, you idiot. Because all of that tobacco smoke gets inside of your machine and gunks up all the tar. It gets up in there. And how do I know this? Because I had an ex that had a beautiful Alienware desktop computer. And he was a heavy smoker. And he smoked almost right next to his uh, desktop. And all the tar and everything got up in there and gunked it up and ruined it. So you're supposed to be a pro gamer and you don't know not to smoke next to your machine, bro. You're blowing all that smoke up in there. The fans are going to suck it up. Stupid. Hello, Lulu. Hi. What time is it there? <laughs> like early? I have the internet shook. Really? What else is new? Have I been canceled again? <laughs> By the way, since we're here, I'm going to just... This is all going to be dark and heavy. Let me just put in a funny, true story about me. Back with my first computer, because I was a noob at that time. And nobody told me this. You guys know I love my incense. And I had an old computer in another apartment. And I would burn the incense sitting on top of my computer. I know, I know, it's stupid, right? Stupid. I didn't know, though. Just incense. One of my favorite incenses to use was Nog Champa. If you haven't tried it, can I recommend it to you because it smells wonderful. Anyway, I burned a lot of it. Then I had to have my computer repaired. Took it to Best Buy. When they opened up my laptop, I'm sorry, not my laptop, my desktop, they could smell the Nog Champa in there. <laughs> so that's how I know you should not smoke or have incense or anything around your computer because the fans, the fans are always sucking in air to keep the machine cool so that it runs so it doesn't overheat. And any kind of residue, any smoke, any incense smoke will get in there and build up and it's just going to become a mess. So there's your funny story of the day. Funny and true. I'm actually going to the gym in a couple hours. I actually... <laughs> I'm probably the only person in the world that had a computer that smells like Nog Champa. Prince Beezer. <laughs> or like in an hour and a half, maybe. But 1 p.m. on a Saturday. People are hungover. No, I'm kidding. I am. Um... Hey, Sanella. Ramadan is going fine. It's been a, like, I have like a um, video. Okay, so as far as Foodie going to the gym, anybody out there believe she's gone to the gym? Because I don't. I absolutely don't. Because how in the world are you going to go to the gym and do any kind of a serious workout and you can't drink water? How can you do that? How can you not drink water during a workout? Because if you're working out, you are getting thirsty. You're sucking down that water like nobody's business. Or you should because your body is sweating. It's overheating. You need that water to stay cool, to stay hydrated. And how is she doing that and staying away from the food? Because when you work out, you get hungry. Your body's burning through all the fuel that you put in it. So how is she able to work out, not eat, not drink water? And why is it that she's going to the gym and she's not hurting all over? She should be hurting right now. She's never really worked out before. 
She should be hurting in places that she didn't even know existed. You should be coming on camera saying, oh, my back hurts, my legs, like this muscle aches, that muscle aches. That's what she should be saying. She's not saying it. So, Fodi, I don't believe you're working out. I don't believe it. Should you be working out? Yes, after a doctor visit to make sure you don't have any health problems, like any heart problems or lung problems. You really need to be aware of that. But just the way you're behaving, nah, you're not working out, girl, please. I've been filming videos. Doing okay, what? You ready, Tom? This is just a soup you get with your meal. So I like cooked and I give up. Like I hate cooking. So I suck at it. So I'm trying to like order healthy stuff. <laughs> she a law. Because as you'll see with this meal, what she ordered was not healthy. She has the soup. And I don't know what all is in the soup, but she's got soup. And for anybody who's interested, if you're trying to lose weight or maintain your weight, soups and stews are fantastic because there's a lot of water. It's a lot of liquid, which makes you feel full longer. Like it takes up the volume in your stomach. So you can make a very healthy stew or very healthy soup. And if you make a lot of it, you can always have it right there to heat up if you get hungry. So if you're trying to stop food cravings, having somebody, something already made that's healthy helps a lot. That stops maybe some of the temptations for eating the naughty foods that you shouldn't have. But she's got the soup. She's got a, a huge salad. And then, and then she moves on to a huge container of rice. So we're carb loading again, are we, foodie? And you got a whole thing of bread. Why is it that all of your meals are super carb loaded? There should be more emphasis on vegetables and fruits and soups and things like that. But you have to make sure the carbs are in there. When you work out, you do need your carbs. But you got to be careful of your carb intake. And you got to pay attention to when you eat as well. Eating a big carb heavy meal before bed, promise you, you'll gain weight that way. If you're going to eat something big, it should be in the morning. That way you've got plenty of time during the day to work off the calories, not late at night before bed. Viva la bees. Honestly, this is like, I miss you guys. I miss talking to you guys and telling you funny things. That's the only thing I miss about you too. <laughs> Mm. beans and potato soup oh so there's carbs in the soup even because she said beans and potato soup so you know what as far as her carbs beans are protein the potatoes are carbs so if you need carbs there's your carbs right there foodie put the bread and the rice away you don't need it you're very sedentary you don't need that much in the way of carbs you don't need that much fuel you don't do much okay <clears throat> um but i have some like funny things happen to me that i'm like i need to tell my visas you know and uh i'm not a good cook though like i, I don't know why like when it comes to like i've just been cr sucking lately and like i think it's because i'm trying to do so many changes like at once like hi pnv working and lurking almost people are working right now i'm drinking from a vase i don't know it's a it's a mixer glass that that is a vase. I said that earlier. I was watching her through another reactor. And when she picked up that glass, I'm like, that looks like a flower vase. That doesn't look like a regular glass. And she just said it was a vase. So is that a vase, foodie? Is that a vase? Vase, however you want to say it. That looks like a flower vase. And that's another thing, another little helpful tip for anybody out there. You're wanting to control your weight or lose weight. Little helpful tip for me. If you have any really large plates or bowls or glasses in your house, either give them away or put them away. Take out only the small plates, the small bowls, the small glasses, the small utensils. Why? Because let me give you an example. This glass that Foodie is drinking out of right now, let's just say, she wasn't drinking water. 
She was drinking soda or juice. Just because she's, you got a huge glass of something, that means you're going to overconsume right there. You're going to take in two to three times what you would need or that you would want just because it's in a bigger glass. Likewise, if you have a bigger plate, because of a bigger plate, you're going to put more stuff on it. Now, if you use a smaller bowl or a smaller plate, you can only put so much on it. And then if you put a certain amount of food in the bowl or the plate, when you're done eating, you can have that moment to say, do I really need or want more? And if the answer is no, well, then you're done eating. But if you take a huge, huge dinner plate or a huge bowl, you're going to fill it up. You're going to eat two to three times what you would normally eat. You can fool your eyes and you can fool your stomach with a smaller plate, smaller bowl, and a smaller glass. It helps to give us more of a sense of control over your portions. <laughs> the bigger, the better when it comes to that. I have a salad. I didn't make the salad, though. I'll show you the food. It's fine. I don't know why you're <laughs> Thanks, babe. He liked it, but like I burnt the rice and I could taste burn. So this is just like a pomegranate salad. And I am okay with Chantal eating salad, even that much salad. She needs to eat more greens. But here's where a lot of people screw up with salads. The dressings. The dressings add calories. A lot of things that we eat contain sugar. Things that you wouldn't think have sugar in them do have sugar. And why? Because sugar is very addictive. And sometimes you can look at the ingredients and you won't see sugar, but there are different names for sugar. So you can take a healthy salad with all kinds of greens and vegetables. It's, it's really healthy. But then you start piling on the dressing and you're adding tons of calories. Um, my chicken parm, like, I don't know how I managed to make that, but like, what do you mean my face is different? Um, I did vlog, just the way my hijab is, I did vlog, um, some gym stuff, so, but like, there's a problem with vlogging at the gym, I have to be really careful because it's a woman's, it's like, it's a woman. How about not be careful? How about not filming at the gym at all? Because you don't know how to be careful and you are not respectful of other people and their privacy and not showing their faces or their bodies on camera. How about not filming at the gym at all? How about if you wanna do any kind of workout related stuff, you have your own apartment. You have a big screen TV, just put a YouTube video on the big screen and work out with that. And if you want to film it, that's fine because it's just you. And you can show everybody your workout and no one else will be shown. You can do things that way. Please, for the sake of everybody's privacy, please don't go to a gym and film the ladies there. They're working out. They're trying to get in shape. And I'm sure they don't want themselves shown, Foodie. Be respectful. It's Jim, right? So um, you have to be like respectful of not to get people in because they're not going to be dressed like this. They're not going to be, you know, the dress for the gym. Right. So if the lady's there, if it's a woman's only gym, it's a ladies only gym, and they're not wearing their hijabs or their abayas, if they're there in an environment thinking that they're safe and no one else is going to see them, and if your camera starts panning around at people, you're breaking their privacy. You're breaking their right to privacy. Don't do that. There are other things you can do for content. Please don't do that. That'd be so highly disrespectful to those ladies. Highly. Uh, same with me. So like, you know, I'm not going to be showing, I'm going to show clips, but mostly like other things too. You guys will see anyways, but yeah. Um, I think it's just like overwhelming. I find sometimes to like cook like a huge meal and then like, you know what it is? It's like the getting ready for everything. That's like really 
time consuming and stressful for me. <clears throat> you already told us you're not going to cook anything in that apartment because it gets too hot. You're always complaining that you're too hot. I don't understand the thinking behind getting a huge stove and then you're not going to cook. Just get rid of it and get rid of the washer and dryer because you're not using those either. Hamster vlogs. Um, is it weird going somewhere without Salam and going to the gym? A little bit maybe, but not really. Like he'll drop me off, go to work out at his gym and then he'll come back. And How does he even know that she's really working out? I mean, we know Chantal pretty well, don't we? I just got a feeling that if he drops her off at the gym, you know, Foodie, she can sweat pretty easily. She just walks for two minutes and she's shiny with sweat. How do we know and how does he know that she's just not walking around for like two minutes and then she gets all sweaty and he comes back and she swears she did a workout? I bet she's not worked out. If she's not sore she's and she's not overly tired, she's not working out. And get me? Like, it's a far enough drive, but it's like, what can you do? <laughs> Hi, Joey. Hey, Tracy. So my salad has, like, watercress, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, pomegranate, pomegranate molasses, lemon juice, olives. I'm really good. So I liked my chicken and rice, but yogurt plain. Hey, LD. Will I try driving there? No. I'm not going to eat this whole portion right now. <laughs> Just some of it. It's kebab and... Uh... Look at the amount of rice in that container. That could easily feed six people. If the portion you're supposed to eat per meal is one cup of rice, that could easily feed six people. And she's going to eat that by herself. Um, rice. I think it's like Afghani style rice, right, babe? Yeah. Hello. So I have some story, some funny story times for you guys. You want? Uh, it's called Bukhari. Bukhari? Yeah. Enjoy it, babe. Thank you. Thank you. There's people streaming. Others, look, there's nothing I can do about leeches, apparently, because... Hi, Veronica. You know, it's funny that she calls us leeches, but yet when she, it suits her, she talks about the reactors. And sometimes she'll react to their streams when she feels like it. So who's leeching off of who, foodie? If I don't, if I don't come on here and do content. Hi, Breezeth. They're going to invent things. They're going to invent things for their own dramatic purposes. No. Let me tell you what would happen if you disappeared for about two weeks, which will never happen. You'll never disappear for two weeks. We'll just find other things to do. We'll enjoy our off time away from you. We'll find other people to react to. I think you are deathly afraid of the possibility of the reactors finding somebody else to react to. I'm just going to make up a name. This person doesn't exist. Uh, let's just say there's a person out there with a channel. We'll call her Pink Elephant Fairies and Unicorns. And she's got interesting content. Let's just say one of the reactors found out about this channel, started covering them. Another reactor said, hey, this person looks interesting. It's more interesting than Chantal. I think I should start reacting to her. And so they do. And then other people start covering this person as well. And then all the attention gets taken off of Chantal. She starts losing the reactors who are reacting to her. Who want to react to this other person because it's more interesting. She starts losing the exposure. She doesn't want that. She deliberately says and does things to keep people watching her boring soap opera. 
but she's run out of ideas. And in my opinion, her channel is waning. It's withering away. And she knows this. And she keeps trying to find ways to keep people interested. So she talks about the reaction channels because she ran out of ideas a long time ago. She doesn't know what else to say or to do that's shocking or dramatic or offensive. She just keeps rehashing the same crap over and over again, talking about the same reactors over and over again. She backed herself into a corner. Could she get herself out by doing something interesting? Yes. Is she going to do it? No, because that would mean she has to actually think about what she's doing. She's got to put some work into what she's doing. She's got to take some pride in herself and her content. And Chantal is not about that life. She's all about coming online and finding whatever ways she could think of to do the least amount of work to make the most amount of money. And if that means scamming people out of money, if that means charging memberships, even though she's quitting YouTube every other day, she promises videos to her VIBs and yet she doesn't come through with that. She'll do it. She wants to make the money, but she doesn't want to work for it. So as I said before, foodie, if you don't work, you don't get the reward. And if other people are working and they're getting the reward, don't complain about it. The reactors work hard to make you interesting. Therefore, we're getting the most reward out of it. If you worked as hard as we do, you might get something back. It's weird. It's pathetic, but it's the way it is, you know, like, like now they're going after Salah's business, like all these conspiracy theories. Um, his, that's not even his, that's not even his Instagram page before his business. If you check his business page, it's, none of those pictures are on there. That's not me. Like they just invent things. It's so pathetic. You have said, Foodie, that Maraud does not ship anywhere. It's basically a local business. You named your perfume the Beezer perfume, and yet the Beezers can't buy it. I mean, they could, but they're not going to receive it, which is silly. You made a perfume with the Beezer name, and yet those who are on your channel, those are your beezers, and they can't buy the perfume. They can't buy it and receive it. They can get their money ripped off. So, you know, I don't understand this whole deal they've got with you. Murad made a perfume targeted at the beezers, yet the beezers none of them can order it and receive it because you guys don't ship anywhere it's just all about the business of ripping off people's money so i i what can i do i can just live my life i can't like punish you guys constantly you know what i mean <clears throat> but you are punishing them you come online you keep your memberships open you don't even close your memberships you're constantly keeping your own members on edge trying to manipulate everybody saying i i'm leaving youtube i'm tired of youtube i'm so burnt out on youtube i don't even want to be here anymore okay then so you're not happy with youtube quit go ahead and quit go for it do it please please do i've got so many things i need to do so many things that i want to do away from you please go Please go. If that's what you want to do, if you are so spoiled rotten by the easy YouTube money that you're actually burnt out on it, go. Get lost. Take off. We'll find other things to do. Watch and see. You say that we need you? No, ma'am. You need us. You need us. If you didn't need us, if we didn't matter, if we were so insignificant, you wouldn't spend all of your time running around to all the chat rooms spying to see what people were saying about you. But obviously you care because if you didn't care, you'd stay in your lane and do your own thing. But you care what people say. 
you're running around all night long to all the chat rooms to see what people are saying. What are the reactions to your newest live? What are the conspiracy theories? What are the theories? What's everybody's thinking? And based on what you hear, you plan on your next live. What to do, what to say. Tell me you don't. You know you do. You know you do. Yeah, Tracy. That's what I have to do. I don't have a choice. Yeah, I have been to the gym. I don't want to talk too much about the gym because I do, I did go, like I did do a lot of filming while I was like gone for a few days. Yeah, none of the theories are true. None, by the way, none. And Salah's going to do like a video on his business eventually. <laughs> Um, yeah, but okay, I'm just gonna say it anybody who's gone to the gym for the first time, one red flag right off the bat. If she has said she enjoyed the gym, she did not go, or if she did, she didn't do anything. Because in the shape that she's in, she should be hurting, hurting, aching from head to toe, sore everywhere, sore, sore. She's not, and she's not going to go. And look at the meal she's eating right now, the soup, the rice. God, the rice, the bread. How in the world is she going to go to the gym after eating all that? She's going to put herself into a food coma. Anybody ever sat down and eat a very heavy meal? Can you get up and go to the gym afterwards? No. Because you feel like you got a lead ball in your stomach. And can you imagine someone like Chantal working out, feeling that way? You can't work out with a full stomach. You will literally make yourself sick. You will feel nauseous because your body is busy digesting the food. And if you try to work out, it's going to freak out. Like, hold on. Hey, you up there, give us an hour to digest this stuff. Before you start putting us through the traces here and you're, you're making us, you know, work out. Let's get the fuel in the body going before you start depleting it. She's not sore. She's not hurting. She didn't go anywhere. She didn't do anything. I'm loving the gym. Like, I thought it's so therapeutic. No, you're not. If she says she loves the gym, she didn't do nothing. Nothing. Therapeutic. It's like me time to just like for like, you know, maybe like two and a half hours. Because like I work out. What? What was that? Two and a half hours, two and a half hours. You worked out for two and a half hours. No, you didn't. I only start, I'm starting with like 20 minutes of cardio right now, but I do like the machines. I love doing the machines. I know my face is weird because this hijab style is different. <clears throat> we said uh, they talk to hear themselves. So foodie has trouble walking for just two minutes. We know this. Because when she went to the mall, when she's walking around with Murad, she was constantly having to stop. And that was just straight walking. That really doesn't raise your heart rate up too much. So how is she working out? If she has trouble walking, just simple, slow walking, how is she working out? Because that's much more strenuous. Yeah. <laughs> they just want to make money. Totally agree, yes. And so do you. So whatever. I mean, where are you going to get the money for all that takeout, YouTube? <clears throat> money makes the world go round. <laughs> this is really good soup. So I'm going to be eating. Sorry. I do all the machines like. No, you don't. You're a liar. You do not. You know, just the uh, exercise machines. And then I do like, um, I go into like a stretch room. I have my own mat. I did like a gym haul and video, so don't worry. I have my own mat and I do. Yeah, we know how that goes. 
Y'all remember classic foodie back in the day, foodie? How many gym clothes did she buy from Tori? She would do hauls of gym clothes. She never went to a gym. She just wore them for the feeders. Do stretches and then I do like light exercises on the, and then I take, you know that thing? I love this exercise the most. You know those balls? They're like weighted ball thing, metal ball with a handle. Is it like a farmer? What's it called? A farmer's bell or something? I don't know. <clears throat> and then I just lift it like up and down and listen to stuff on my earphones or whatever. And then I take me more me time and like go and have, like I pack a huge bag of stuff. Like my clothes, I have to bring my abaya and all different clothes and everything. I'm going to explain that all. But then like I go in like into the spa section and everything. Well, I really hope that if she went to the spa section, that she showered off before she went into the spa. A kettlebell, <laughs> farmer bell. The farmer in the dell. <laughs> really, LV? It's really good. Anyway, I feel sore, but. You are not sore. Ma'am, I've worked out. I've worked out at home. I used to have an exercise bike I called George. And I hated George. <laughs> I hated George because I got a big old butt. And I had a little bitty bicycle looking seat. That thing was a spawn of Satan. But then again, when I used the exercise bike, I had a little counter thing on there that would count how many calories you're burning. I would stay on there for a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Sometimes I would push myself to two hours. And even the exercise bike, I was in pain. Everything was hurting. Oh my goodness, my butt was hurting. My legs were hurting. My waist was hurting. It was a good kind of pain because you can feel your core muscles, but it hurt. I'm watching you. You're not saying, ow. You're not wincing when you move. You lie. I started the gym later than I wanted to because I wasn't feeling great. Like I wasn't motivated to do anything. I was giving up on life again. But I'm okay now for now, inshallah. So, but the fasting, I'm feeling the fasting more now that I'm eating healthier, like eating less because um, I'm not eating all night. <laughs> Like I have iftar and then suhoor and that's it. I Wait a minute. The last stream that you did, girlfriend, you were up at like three, four in the morning. You were stuffing yourself into the last possible second. And I know where that's coming from. I know exactly where that's coming from. You have a problem with food. You're addicted to food. And just like anybody else with any kind of addiction, you know, when you find out there's going to be a time where you cannot do what you're addicted to mentally, psychologically, emotionally, you freak out and you're like, oh, my God, I, I, I'm going to have to stop doing this for a short period of time. So let me just do all that I can up until that stopping point. You know, you like you load up. You were literally up at three in the morning. Stuffing yourself stupid. So that when the time came where you didn't, you couldn't eat, you're already full. You're full for quite a while. You overstuffed your stomach so that you'd be good for another four or five hours. And knowing you, foodie, and I'm just going on a theory here. Here's what I think is going on. I think you stay up or you get up very early in the morning before Ramadan starts, before dawn. And you'll eat and you'll eat and you'll eat and overstuff yourself. And then you go to bed and you're sleeping literally all day. You're sleeping right through it so that when you wake up, you don't have long to feel hungry. That's just a theory. I could be wrong. I don't eat all night snacks and everything. So you really feel the fasting. <laughs> okay. So with foodie, it's all about semantics, wordplay, the fine print. So she says, I'm not eating snacks. All night long you want to know why because if she ate snacks like say ice cream or candy bars or chips 
that would not keep her full for long and she knows it. So what is she loading up on? Carbs. Because with carbs, she'll stay full longer. Here's where you're screwing up, foodie. Listen close. If you want to stay full longer, you load up on the protein. You stay full longer on the protein. But you're loading up on carbs instead. And you're also going, getting stupid with the salt and the sodium. What's that lead to? Extreme thirst. You're going to get thirsty. So you may not be eating the sugary snacks. But that does not mean that you're eating healthy. It just means you're eating something different, like the carbs, to stay full longer so that you won't feel any kind of sense of hunger for too long. And I've been getting up earlier in the day, too. Um, what do you mean? You don't go to bed till like four in the morning. Yeah, thanks. I'm trying. Degrassi is here. <laughs> I got three set of kettlebells off Amazon. Yeah, it helps to keep the bone strong. I'm going to need that for sure. So this is mabuch. It's like a chili tomatoey sauce, I think. It's so good all over this bad boy here. This ray. So yeah. I've been living off of... Sometimes I cook and it's not bad. Sometimes I tried a new recipe today and it was just a disaster. <clears throat> You know when the rice burns on the bottom and it permeates all of the pot? Ugh. Anyway, so that's it. But Salah loved it, so. <laughs> we need to get back to the gym after my daughter. It's literally two doors. Yeah. No, I, I think she knows how to cook. She just doesn't want to. So if she cooks something and she burns it or it's really lousy, she can look at Salah and go, well, I'm not that really good of a cook. Can we just go out and get fast food? And he'll say yes. Yeah, no, I'm I'm actually enjoying it maybe because like it, you know, it gets me out and to do something productive for myself. Huh? Since when have you been productive? Since when have you wanted to go out and do anything? You know, and it, it is hard like mentally and avoiding junk. Like there's there's been nights where I've had a hard time falling asleep because I'm like thinking of like junk food. <clears throat> or if we drive when we're driving to the gym, there's like billboards of like McDonald's and I'm just like <laughs> but no. I feel a lot better, my stomach and everything, you know, but this is a lot of food. This is like a hundred. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Foodie, why couldn't you just take a little bit of that rice, put it on a plate with maybe one of the kebabs and put the rest in the fridge? Why do you have to have the entire thing out like that? Because if you got a huge plate of food in front of you, what's going to happen? You're going to eat the whole doggone thing. But if you're trying to control your portions, if you're trying to be healthy, then you must know that that's way too much rice. Just take out one kebab, a little bit of rice, put it on a plate, put the rest away. That way it's out of sight, out of mind. And you're not thinking about eating it. You can still have it. It's just out, out of eyesight. Put it in the fridge. You don't need all that. 100 meals. <laughs> so I'm going to eat a little bit and then, yeah. Spoiler, she doesn't eat a little bit. Usually a portion. And by the way, foodie, remember what I said about smaller utensils? That counts too. Because look what she's eating with. A freaking serving spoon. You don't need a spoon that big. I don't want to play, but I'm too lazy to go get one. <laughs> But I'm going to be working out of the gym later now. So this is just kebab and rice. But. My He's dropping the food on the abaya. She's dropping the food on the abaya. Like a toddler. Do you need a bib, foodie? Can Salah go get you a bib? Because a bib would make sure that your abaya doesn't get stained. Favorite thing is like yogurt. Like look at the rice on the abaya. Plain yogurt with this, meat, rice, and salad. Keep the food out of reach. <laughs> I'll keep it, keep all the junk be, uh, um, beside Salah in bed, and then you'll hear the rustling. Okay, I have some story time, speaking of rustling. I have like three separate story times, but... If I have hey, Salah, 
You want to make sure she stays out of the food, bro? Lock the fridge. Lock it. I'm not even joking. You want to make sure she's not sneak eating? Lock that fridge. Put everything in there and lock it. Time. If I don't have time, I'll save it for another day. Beauty bite. Yeah. Mm. And take her phone away so she can't order her off a food app. I try to make rice and cook like this, but it takes practice. I don't know. The whole, more whole foods, exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not like on a strict, strict like. Right now, so far, I've cut out. I haven't had any water. Um, you should drink water. Actually, water is good for you. Water is very good for you. What you should be cutting out are the carbs. Girl, all that rice, all that bread, why? You don't need it. Cut down on your carbs. <laughs> Joey, yeah. <clears throat> There's not much junk food in here anyway. There's a few sweets, but I can show you the bowl. Like, they're all still there. Here's where you're messing up, foodie. Whether it's straight sugar or carbs. Carbs turn into what? Sugar. You're still putting sugar in your system. Bread, carbs, rice, carbs, pasta, carbs. What about your sodas? What's in your sodas? Sugar. Whether you know it or not or realize it or not, you are a carb addict, ma'am. You're addicted to sugar. You've said in the past, I don't have a sweet tooth. I say that's a bunch of BS. Because if you are into sweets and snacks, which you are, and if you are into carbs, which you definitely are, you're a carb addict. You're into sugar. Okay? And that's that's a hard thing to get past because sugar isn't everything. I speak from experience. I was a carb addict. I was into sugar. Not trying to trigger anybody, but when I was into my problem with food, I would be okay. Go to bed at night and dream about food, much like she does. Not to the extent that she does, but I still did. I would dream about eating candy bars and had a dream once about eating a peanut butter cheesecake. I've never had that, but I was eating it in my sleep. Yeah, your mind will mess with you for a while until you get the problem under control. But she is a carb sugar addict because she's not really putting healthy food into her body for energy. She's using sugar for energy. She feels sluggish and tired without her caffeine, without her sugar, without her carbs. So she's relying those to get her butt out of bed. I twice divorced. Um, these pomegranate salads are awesome too. Oh, good greens. Yeah, it took some time to relax. Mm -hmm. Right, Sonella. Um, um, yeah, so I'm going to be going to the gym in like a little bit. Because the gyms are open super late. Because of Ramadan. <laughs> Phil, it's the shisha. So what's the plan? You're going to go to the gym super late because no one else will be there. And maybe you can film without anybody else being around. Is that the plan? Machine. The noise you're hearing. <laughs> anyway. If you have chips in your house, yeah. Hi, Aisha. Yogurt helps also is good for like digestion. So I like to eat it. I started doing that when I came here because it was like, you know, a thing that Salah did. People usually eat yogurt with like meal. Yogurt is very healthy. But if you have a high sugar diet, which you do, foodie, that yogurt is not going to do much for you. If you're sitting there sucking down sweetened coffee drinks and sodas it's not going to help awesome. speaking of which can y'all give me a second i need to get some water because i am thirsty give me just a second
I signed off earlier, but I think I caught you working. Still working. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm back. Sorry, I just need a big old glass of water because I am thirsty. Just craving water today. Ah. Let's continue, shall we? <laughs> Lazy. I'm, I know you guys miss mine, but I can't now. <laughs> so get this straight okay get this get it check this out number one story time this is weird i think i'm a like a mini kuwaiti celebrity because <laughs> before i started like going to the gym i, d I did vlog some of the meal but uh and i was like craving craving a burger and fries so i went to hardy's and ate inside the restaurant because like the fast food is so much more fresh that way. Protein, yeah. Yeah. I find like a mixture of everything keeps me the most satisfied. Like some like low fat dairy or like dairy, whatever. Salad, like rice, meat. I find that keeps me the most satiated. That's why I've been loving it. So wait. Yeah, and it's like super affordable compared to like buying all the stuff, actually making it yourself in a lot of ways. Here, I find. I have a... So. Piece of mint. <laughs> Celebrity. Hi, AMC. So we're in the Hardee's and <laughs> we're eating. And then, like, I kind of noticed... Hi, Lolo! Thanks, I miss you guys, too. It does taste better. Well, LD, not really, actually. <laughs> the restaurant tastes better. Because it's, like, home-cooked restaurant food. Mm. Anyway. Foodie, stop stuffing your face long enough and talk to people. Because I know what you do when you do these eating streams, okay? I'm not dumb. We're not dumb over here. You don't have much to talk about. So when you get on stream eating, what you're doing is essentially running up the meter. You're trying to find ways to stall, to draw out the time longer so that you make more money off of Google AdSense. You could just eat a meal and then come on camera and talk for a good hour and 34 minutes all the way through like the reactors do. We don't do this nonsense of coming on camera and putting on our makeup and eating to draw out the time to run up the meter. That is what you do. You eat gross, you know, with your mouth open, you've got bad table manners, worse than a toddler. But you're sitting there eating and probably thinking of what should I say next? Rather than just have an idea in your head of things to talk about. If you had an idea, time will just fly by and it will stay interesting. But coming on camera and just eating a meal, which you would do anyway, and thinking that's interesting enough and good enough content to make you money, there's no longevity in that. That's not something that people are going to tune in for the next time, unless you're a feeder, then you might. But anybody else who's not a feeder is not going to give a crap. If you're eating a salad or soup or kebabs or rice, that's not interesting content. Watching you eat is not interesting content. Unless you're one of the idiot feeders, that that's what they're tuning in for to see you stuff your face and your health to get worse. I kind of like noticed peripherally people around me. And there was a guy like sitting across from us. Like a Kuwaiti guy. And then after we're done eating, uh, he comes up to Salah. He's like, hey, like in Arabic, like, do you mind if I say something to your wife or something? 
And then he just like came over to me and was like, I just want to let you know I watch your YouTube channel. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> Here I am like fisting a cheeseburger and fries. Like not thinking anyone is watching me. I th I'm thinking I'm safe. I'm in another country. No one's going to recognize me in public. You know, Fodi, I, again, I saw this on another reaction channel. And the first thing that came to my mind when you said that, that you got recognized in a restaurant, somebody came up and said, I know you from your YouTube channel. I would be worried. I would be worried. Because you don't know who that person knows. And word does get around. And if you are acting offensively on your channel, if you're doing offensive things, if you're saying offensive things, there might be people in that area that may not appreciate that. That person walking up and saying, I know you from your YouTube channel, that may not be a good thing. Because goodness knows you do not do positive content. It's during Ramadan. And what are you doing on your channel? You're raging about people. You're cursing. You're being gross. You're being gluttonous. And you're claiming to be a newly reverted Muslim woman. What do you think other people who are not your viewers would think about that? How do you think they're going to feel? Given your content and the way you present yourself, consider the thought that the person walking up to you and saying, I recognize you from your YouTube channel, it may not have been the compliment that you think it is. And word may get around. Be careful over there. Be careful. Uh-uh. So, <laughs> <laughs> dear Drew, <laughs> who knows? It wouldn't surprise me if she was that crazy to send her brother in a dish dasha over here to stalk me. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, way. So I was like, I felt like a celebrity all night, you know, I'm just like. But you're not a celebrity. One person walking up and saying they recognize you, you're not a celebrity. If you were a celebrity, foodie, why are you living in that tiny apartment and talking about how cheap everything is? If you were a celebrity, wouldn't you have lots of money? Wouldn't you have a big house and be living large? Yeah, I think you would. One person recognizing you does not mean you're a celebrity, ma'am. Cool. Hey, movie girl. Yeah. Really? And if you were a celebrity, wouldn't you be happy to be recognized? You weren't happy. You felt embarrassed. You said it yourself. You were double fisting a burger, stuff in your face, and somebody recognized you. I'm sure you felt awkward and embarrassed. Because maybe that person was seeing you off your channel and they saw how you really looked. And they're probably thinking to themselves, dang, she looks different without those filters. I almost didn't recognize her. So this is the infamous foodie beauty. You're not a celebrity, ma'am. There are two terms you should be familiar with, famous and infamous. Famous is when you do something or you are something that other people admire and they look up to. Infamous is the complete opposite. You are infamous. You will always be infamous. You are no one that anyone looks up to. You are despicable. You are filthy and dirty and disgusting and vile and vulgar and evil. And for that, you will never be famous. Nobody will ever envy you who you are, what you are, what you have, how much money you got, nobody is jealous of you. Nobody is envious of you. Nobody looks at you and says, I want to be her. I want her life. I wonder what it'd be like to be her friend. I would love to hang out with her. Nobody has those thoughts because you're infamous. 
Well, I don't know, movie gal, but no autograph, no. <laughs> um, so then that was like my last fast food meal. And I haven't been drinking any soda. I've been like addicted to Pepsi. Like I would drink like one of those whole liters a day, liter and a half a day. We know, we saw. None of that. And you know what you're probably going to have fun with? If you're someone and you're used to a lot of caffeine, that's how you wake yourself up. If you try to go without caffeine, you will get headaches. You'll feel tired. You'll feel run down because your body is weaning off the caffeine. Oof. And at the same time she's doing that, she's going to the gym and she's not tired and she doesn't have headaches. Hmm. Yeah. So you don't have headaches right now, foodie? You used to drinking all that soda and you don't have a headache? And you're not tired and fatigued? Yeah, sure. Yeah, like you're really good. You're, you're still consuming the soda. You're just doing it off camera. Oh, London. I'm eating kebab and rice. Are you enjoying your game, honey? Yes, baby. <laughs> your shisha? <clears throat> I was like... Everything is fine. Yeah, I'm like, let's just go live and relax and just be ourselves. Like, you know, like no stress, just do whatever. Anyway. What is the point of him even being there? He's just sitting there playing his video game and making occasional comments. So let's just go home. Go back to your real home and play your video game in peace, bro. Why, why are you even there? Diet soda? You're, you're annoying with the shisha in the background, bro. If you're going to play a game, if all you're going to do is play the game and smoke off the shisha, go back to your real home and do it. It's just like the chemicals. Hi, basic. People were so bored, they started defending natural and beauty and consensual BDSM. Yeah, Aisha, like, I heard that. That's really sad, actually. Like, which one is it? Like, are you saying that, you know, like in one breath that Gary guy will say, twice divorced, British and BBDs, that he's never going to stop talking about an abuser, but then in the next breath saying that it's, is she being abused? Well, which one is it? It can't be both. Like these people just call Okay, this is the part where I give my thoughts and opinions on that situation. Since Foodie is putting it on the table once again, I'm just gonna give my thoughts. And remember, these are my thoughts, these are my opinions. And anybody listening, you are free to have your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Let's talk for a minute about the situation with Didi and Natter, what I think of it. And Please forgive me if I bring something of an adult nature to this conversation. But like I said, Foodie has put this on the table. So let's discuss it in a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A responsible adult way. A way that's not vulgar or disgusting. I do have knowledge of BDSM. I have knowledge and I'm bringing that to the table right now. As far as Didi and Natter are concerned, here's what I think the situation might be. My thoughts. I think as far as BDSM and Didi and Natter, I think they're both uneducated about that world. I think that they do a lot of role play. Do I think that Natter is a true Dom? No, absolutely not. I think that Dee Dee and Natter are both switches. For those who do not know what that is, please let me explain. Switches are people that they are not completely sub, nor are they completely Dom. 
Switches are people that can be either submissive or dominant, depending on the situation and the people that they interact with. I think the Didi and Natter are both switches. Here's the problem with the way that they play. Number one, when you engage in that kind of play, if there is a person that is a dominant during the entire play, they stay in that role. Likewise, if there is a person who is being a submissive, they stay in that headspace during the play. There is not a vibe of during the play, they switch back and forth. There's a reason for that. Because if you switch back and forth, there's gonna be confusion, okay? One person stays in one headspace, the other person in the other headspace. Another problem with their play, and again, this is my opinion, I think that there are no set boundaries, that there aren't any safe words. I think, again, my opinion, I think that Dee Dee, she likes to play with fire. She knows that Natter has a terrible temper and she likes to poke at him. She likes to rile him up and forgive my language, but I think it actually gets her off to rile him up and to get him angry uh, it, maybe it's exciting to her. And I think because there are no defined roles and because they switch back and forth during the play, things go too far. They go way too far. She likes to poke at him. She likes to get him riled up. Maybe it's exciting to her and then things go too far. But even in the Sam's Bar Lounge videos, I could actually hear and see like the switching back and forth. You know, she started off in one video where she was acting almost dumb-ish to Natter and he was being more submissive to her. And then it flipped over to him being more dumb-ish and her being more submissive. Also, I'd like to say there's a reason why BDSM scenes are conducted in private. Because those who are involved understand what's going on. And everything is consensual. And even if you have a situation where there are people who are spectators, they know what's going on and they are consenting to watching. Even if there are people who are watching they should be given the option to consent or not consent and walk away. By Didi and Natter bringing the whole BDSM aspect to YouTube, those who are watching them because they are not aware that there's BDSM play at work because they don't, they have that kind of relationship and they're not knowledgeable of it. Of course, they're going to assume that what they're watching is entirely abusive because if you don't have knowledge of that world if you don't know the boundaries if it's not being explained to you you will assume it's abusive but Dee, Dee has come on camera herself and said that they have a bdsm type relationship has she not yes she has here's the problem with that they may have that kind of relationship but they've never explained to the audience what the boundaries are. They've never said, this is what's consensual. And this over here is what's abusive. This is what's not allowed. So that the audience watching them, they will know what's okay and what's not okay. Hence the reason why you don't bring BDSM to YouTube. This is not stuff that should be put on a public platform in front of an audience because by doing that you're not giving your audience prior knowledge of what's going on and therefore not giving them the option to consent or not consent even the audience has the right to consent they don't do that they brought it to youtube they put it on the table 
A lot of people don't understand BDSM. And I will tell you, BDSM is consensual play. All parties involved, it's about consent. It's about honor. It's about trust. It's about boundaries. How do you establish boundaries? The Dom and the sub talk to each other. They get to know each other. A lot of talking happens before any kind of physical play. BDSM is more about the mind than the body, believe it or not. But it's all about consent. Anybody involved, whether it's an audience member or people participating, everybody gives consent. If you're not giving your consent, you don't play, you don't watch. But they brought it here. Now, as far as the recent going ons with Didi and Natter, yes, we've seen bruises. We've seen things that are alarming. Problem is, we don't know if what we're looking at was consented to or not. But of course, us being the audience, we're going to assume the worst. But how do we know if what we're looking at was something that was done during rough play and it was consensual or not. We don't know that. That's why it shouldn't be brought here. That's why it shouldn't be shown to us. I would also like to say that I'm not victim shaming, but as someone that I've dealt with DV personally, I find it very strange, very, very odd that if Dee Dee is being abused, if she's being hurt, in a lot of cases with victims who go through DV, you are afraid of the person who hurts you. You're always on guard. You do your best to not anger them, to provoke them. You go out of your way to perhaps not make eye contact or stay out of the same room that they're in. You avoid them. You avoid the anger. You do what you can to keep from getting them all worked up. And I find it strange with Dee Dee that she is not afraid of Natter. She has no fear of him, much like Foodie didn't have fear of Natter. And yet she said she went through certain kinds of pain with Natter. She wasn't afraid of Natter and she wasn't afraid of spending time around Natter. But yet Dee Dee constantly provokes Natter. She is not afraid of him at all. I've watched her. I don't see her flinch. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you what I see, okay? If they say they've in a BDSM relationship, again, what is consensual and what is not? What is abuse and what is not? We don't know. We don't know. I don't wish for anyone to be in an abusive relationship. But if those two say they're in a BDSM relationship, then the question is, what is abuse and what isn't? What is the result of rough play and what isn't? We don't know. There's no way to know. They haven't explained it to us and they're not going to. They're going to let the audience speculate all day long because it means extra attention. And believe it or not, there are people in the world that they like really rough play. Really, really rough play. I don't know if Didi is one of those. It's not my business, but she might. She absolutely might. What we might be seeing on camera is a result of something going on. But again, the question is, is it consensual or not? Another thing that I find funny about her, most people who go through DV, they don't show off their injuries. They hide them because you're ashamed of them. She's shown off hers. So it makes me scratch my head. And the final point that I have is if you've gone through any kind of, I have to say a bus because it's YouTube monetization. If you've been through any kind of a bus, y'all know what I'm talking about. How can you sit there 
and go through any kind of trauma and then turn around and talk so viciously, so evil about somebody else's trauma. How can you sit there and do that without batting an eye? Didi talked disgustedly about Gary Unfiltered, about his past trauma and said that he deserved it. Didi, if you've been through trauma, if you're going through trauma, how can you talk like that about somebody else's trauma and say they deserved it? I don't know anybody who's been through that kind of trauma that could ever say that to another person, ma'am. So it's like all these different things that are making me look at her sideways. And it makes me wonder, is she going through a bus or is she not? Because a lot of things look really funny to me. That's all I got to say about that. Contradict themselves all the time. It's so ridiculous, you know? Hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Yeah. Oh. And then they're going like conspiracy theory about a picture that I'm like supporting his business. I have nothing to do with his business, by the way, at all. Nothing. If you look at his like business, there's so many, by the way, there's so many different Instagram accounts like under that brand. And that picture is clearly not me. And the monitor, nothing is the same in the background. There's a window. What is it? I have windows or I don't. You know, like people just don't think with their brain. <laughs> so the big question that I have for foodie is what are you bringing to the table to benefit this situation with Murad and Salah? Why is Salah hanging on to you? He's not in love with you. Is he using you for temporary money? Is he using you because you're building up his bank account and in the future he's going to go travel alone? That's what everybody's wondering. Because we all know he's not in love with you. We also all know that at some point he's going to let you go. We just don't know what his plan is just yet. Anyway, I don't know. How, that's the thing. Like, yeah, he was an abuse victim. So how do you want people to have sympathy for you? with your story and believe you, no, no, no questions asked, but then downplay someone else's abuse. What, whether, whatever you think about Didi, it's, that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's the principle, like. Ma'am, ma'am, when you heard that Didi was possibly getting hurt, you were gloating over it. You were gloating. You got a Sparkle in your eye like nothing else. You were happy that she was being hurt. As a matter of fact, you played the Sam Spar Lounge video on your channel. You were playing it for everybody. Imagine that. If Diddy was going through some kind of hurt, you were showcasing that on your channel, using it to demean and degrade her. Again. You're supposed to be a victim, right? That's what you said. That's the whole thing you've been trying to press on everybody. I've been through DV, I've been through SA, but yet here you are, here you have been gloating over Dee, Dee being hurt. Many times over have you done that. I've never known anybody who has been through that kind of trauma that would use the trauma of another victim and weaponize it against them. But you did that. And now Dee Dee's done it, talking about Gary Unfiltered. And for that, you're both disgusting. And it makes me question how much of a victim you are and how much of a victim she is. Like your behavior is questionable and so is hers. It really, really is. Of the abuse, it's not anything more than that. You know what I mean? <laughs> really twice divorced yeah well especially like when you have video proof of like people just forget about sam's bar lounge like that's it hi rabbi mm. drive safe like it's ridiculous people will like be abuser sympathizers 
for the sake of spiting somebody. You wanted to everybody to sympathize with everything that you said was happening to you. But if you want my opinion, Chantal, I don't think anything happened to you. I think you're a fake, phony victim, a victim for pay, a victim for views. You know there are people in your audience that may have gone through that trauma. And you use that as a shocking, triggering topic on purpose to get people to feel some kind of way, to re-trigger them to where they felt like, oh, I've been through this. Now you're going through this. I sympathize here. Let me show my support by throwing you a super chat or buying a membership. You capitalized on that many times over, triggering people who've really been through that trauma. And you did it without a single regret, no remorse. You didn't care about people in your audience that have actually been through that. That might be trying to heal from that. You're thinking about how it's going to benefit your bank account. And you keep bringing it up. And we both know nothing happened to you. Because if something had happened to you, you wouldn't have felt comfortable spending time with Natter in all those motel and hotel rooms. God, no. Victims stay away from their abusers. They don't want nothing to do with them. They don't even want to hear or think of their name. They can't think of what happened to them without having flashbacks, without getting upset. That never happened to you. And nobody I could think of would pay the abusers for their groceries, their phone bill, their internet send them gift packages, send them money. No, you did that. You did that. You kept running back to Natter over and over and over again. And where a lot of victims, they go back to their abusers because they have nowhere else to go. They have no other home. They have no money in the bank, nothing. You always had a home. You had money in the bank. You had your own car. Natter couldn't even come to see you. You always made the choice to be around him. And when you did, you had no fear of him. You had no fear to the point where you were constantly poking at him and provoking him in person and also through your videos. So explain that to me. Explain that to somebody who's actually been through DV. How you can provoke your abuser with no fear. How you can sit there and watch their videos on their channel and not get triggered. Please explain it to me. I'd like to know how you did that. How you were so eager to talk to them, so eager to spend time around them. How did you do that, Chantal? If you've been through any kind of trauma. Because I haven't heard of anybody that could ever do that if they've ever been abused. Aisha. Here it goes. Anyway. I'm glad my community is not like that. Like, think about it. People dish, diss on the beasters because they know we're, like, not like this. Like, you guys don't go and, att like, attack people in real life and... Bullshit. That's a bunch of BS. Yes, they do. I've seen people in your chat, they encourage doxing. And you, ma'am, you, you, asking Kiwi Farms to dox people on your behalf. You did that. You. You did. I'm glad my community's not like that. No, they're actually worse. You know what you have? Let me spell it out for you. You got a bunch of enablers over there. They see your problems with substances, with food. And they encourage you to eat and eat and eat. Yeah, I'm calling out all of you feeders over there. Anybody that encourages Chantal to eat, you know she's got a problem with food. You know she's over 500 pounds. You see her health problems, yet you encourage her to eat. Hey, Chantal, let's go out for ice cream, get some snacks. I'm talking to you. I'm talking directly to you. 
all of you that are feeders, you are here to watch her demise. You're contributing to it. You see, she's got a problem with food. You're helping to enable it. She's destroying herself. You're helping with that. I don't care if you've given her a dollar. You're still an enabler. And if your defense is going to be, because I like Chantal, I like her personality. I want to give support. If you know someone is an addict and you want to give support in a healthy way, there are other ways to do it. You can leave a comment for free. It has nothing to do with money. You can leave a comment for free. You can write her on Instagram, whatever. You don't have to enable the addiction. You know where your money's going. You know what she's using it for. And you're completely okay with that. Yet her health is worse. She can barely walk. She can barely breathe. She's got all these health problems. You're enabling this crap. Without you, she wouldn't be able to do what she does. Is she a person that can make her own decisions? Yes, she can. But who's enabling this crap, y'all? All of you? If something happens to her, can you say that you're not entirely to blame? That you didn't have a hand in it? You know you did. You're the hand that literally feeds her. Think about that. You know, like... <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Actually, lazy. I've been learning keyboard. I learned some riffs. Oh, not riffs. What do you call that? I learned the notes, basic elements. Like, hold on. Shows more of this side of my face. Then, like, usually I cut this part off. <laughs> Hi, pickle soup. Lolo. Yeah, I know. Your mama's been dragging everyone. Yeah. I've been seeing here and there. Or hearing things, you know. But I've been trying to just mostly stay off and just like not pay attention to the drama. He's a liar. She came into No Madness Life's chat where she was not welcome. She's peeping everywhere. She's lurking everywhere. And you know what, Chantal? It would show more courage if you came in under the Foodie Beauty account rather than a sock because even when you come in on a sock account with a fake name we know it's you you give yourself away drama but now i can catch up <laughs> mm. true i'll do your mama if he stand with the haters ah, shut up sala uh, but if he's uh, spilled that sala just go back to playing your video game bro you're boring quit it go back to your game smoke your shisha be quiet truth and be like uh, you got nothing to add to this live stream that's educational or worth listening to be just be quiet bro be a good robot just sit over there and be quiet um, and nobody side mm. they will hate him oh yeah hypocrisy community really i love the fact that sologist he talks on girl world without knowing girl world like he is just a subplot character that got added and he's just talking like he knows everybody and everything. Really? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> so funny. <sighs> My family visit Kuwait. There's no plans for that now. <clears throat> but <clears throat> now I have a crazy frog in my head. Ring, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> What's going on? No, no. Yeah. Not a hot sauce. Is this high in sodium? <laughs> it's just disgusting saying like our clothes look like rags, blah, blah, blah. Well, your face looks like a rag. I'm kidding. <laughs> and she's talking like this during Ramadan. Shouldn't she be practicing more uh, happy thoughts, positive thoughts, doing good? No, she's still being the same hateful person she ever was. Sorry. Okay, so another story time. You know what? I just, I'm just like, I should just say and do whatever I want. I told that to Salah today. I'm like, when have you not done that? <laughs> when have you not done and said whatever you want? You do that anyway, regardless of how you're dressed or 
what your spirituality might be. You've always done that, foodie. When have you never done what you wanted? When have you never said what you wanted? Hmm? Because like, honestly, no matter what I do, people don't believe me or they just make up things. And because you're a liar, that's why you lie. That is the, the constant in your life. Foodie lies. If she's breathing, if she's talking, she's lying. She lies when she doesn't even have to lie. If I'm not even online, they make up things anyway. So who cares? Or money. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Who cares? You just said it. Who cares? Why do you care? If that's the way you feel, that's the way you feel. Who cares, right? Apparently you do because you're in everybody's chats and lurking so much. Nosy, bitty, busy body. Why do you care? If it's irrelevant, then it's irrelevant. Irrelevant means you don't care about it. You don't pay attention. So why are you paying attention? Hmm? Why? I'm eating a salad right now. I'm eating kebab and rice. Who cares? Which I had one kebab. I'm gonna have the. I'm gonna. Will you eat the other one later? Why don't we have suhu? For suhu, I try to eat. I did some filming of what we had, so I'm gonna do a vlog. Don't worry. <laughs> The shisha is so good. Yeah, we know, Sala, because you won't stop s smoking on it, bro. You're overdoing it. The shisha's good? Yeah, full of relax. Really? Mm-hmm. The fasting is harder now because I'm up earlier and I'm not, like, eating crap all night. Before, the, you, No, you just eat crap all morning right up until the time you have to stop. I would eat like cheesies and chocolate, like everything all night. And then, of course, I'm not going to have time to be hungry, right? Which you're not supposed to do. So now that I'm like trying to be healthier, it is like mentally hard. We still get those impulses, but I just go to bed, try to ignore them. Right. She'll sit there and she'll eat until the very last second, then go right to bed and sleep for hours. <laughs> I'm really just like, you know, hmm. this meal comes with this I want so bad. And there's the bread, as if we need more carbs. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to eat it. Bread. She's, oh, did you see that? I'm not going to eat it. And she looks over at him like, well, I'm not going to eat it right now. But it's a temptation food, isn't it? And if you have a problem with food, what is the one thing you don't do? Have your temptation foods in the house. If you can reach out and grab them or walk across the room and get them, they're too close. Because what are you going to do? You're going to eat them because they're right there. Now, if the bread were, is, say, in a grocery store or a convenience store and you've got the craving, then it's going to be a process to go get it. You might want to stop yourself at that point. But if you can get it and it's right there, you're going to go get it. So the best thing to do is don't have the temptation foods where you can get to them. Hello, Stan. <laughs> you missed me so much. That's nice to know that I was missed, at least, you know, some of you guys. So, mm. even the hitters miss you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. For sure. They, they, no, we don't. The view is haram. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I find disgusting is Shannon. Okay. Like, I find it really funny that um, Goblin's community will call me vile, but not say. So she's telling on herself. She just told on herself. This person's community. She just told on herself, y'all. How would you know what people are saying about you unless you were paying attention? Unless you were all up in their chats and all on Twitter. Because the reactors, we don't talk on Instagram where you are. You just told on yourself. You just told on yourself. 
you just, you basically admit it to being a nosy, busy body. In order for you to know what people are saying, you're paying attention. You're reading things, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Say anything about her video saying she wishes that Didi, uh, Natterd would kill Dudu, uh, Didi, and that um, she, she's so glad that she gets her face smashed in every night. So it's okay for you to be sympathetic with Gary over his story of abuse, but then you wish someone to die? Like, how does that make any sense? It's horrible. And nobody calls her out. Like, everyone's like, yay, you go, you're awesome, you're badass. Yeah, you're real badass. And by the way, she means it. Yeah, she means yeah. it, you can tell. She's like she insane. So yeah, serious. goof. Whenever she starts going, yeah, goof, she means it. That's how she is. And that, I can't be friends with someone like that. Sorry. Were you friends with anybody? I think I can say this. Honestly, foodie, I don't think you've ever had a true friendship with anyone. I can read people pretty good. I'm very good at that. And I think I can say with full confidence, you are a person that you don't really make friends. You meet up with people, you size them up, you see what they're about, you figure them out to see what you can get out of them or what they can do for you. And you play with them. You look at them and say, what are the benefits of knowing this person? of talking to this person. Can I use them for something? Can I use them to get something or to run into it in some kind of social circle? You look at a person and decide how useful they are. You're a user, you use people. And if there comes a point where they're no longer useful, that's when you throw them away. You're not about true friendship and companionship you're about using people scamming people grifting people lying to people manipulating people you're all about using people to whatever end you have in mind that is you like not only not only Okay. By the way, did she take uh, her dog for the vet? Uh, sorry, yeah. For the vet? No. <clears throat> she locks their dog in the room. Anyway, so how about this? You are no one to be talking about pet care and judging somebody's pet care. With everything we know about BBJ, ma'am, you should shut up right now. You should really shut up right about now. How is it okay? Like, I just, it's it's just so stupid. Yeah. Anyway, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, you should be done. Yeah, that, that's a road you don't want to go down, foodie. With everything we know about BBJ and Sam, you really don't want to go down that road. Okay. One more bite. <laughs> so good. Yeah, in five ingrown nails kidney issues, matted fur, underweight, bad dental hygiene. Yeah, you need to shut up. <laughs> Her dog bit someone, yeah. No rabies shot. <clears throat> um, the titles alone, I know. Live your life like no one's watching, I know. Well, that's true, Tracy. It's just like pointing out stupid things, though. Like, I don't understand. We're like... Apparently, Goblin... <coughs> like did away with like her friend just saying for a lot less than what Shannon did. Might I remind you that Shannon outed my abuse when I asked her not to. I confided in her as a longtime friend. She's never be betrayed my confidence like that. So then that was shocking for me. Can we just talk on that for a second? The whole A issue? Something I want to remind everyone on. Let's go back in time for just a second. 
to when Natter and D Fody were seeing each other. Let's go all the way back in the time machine. I remember when Fody was seeing Natter. She was coming home with bruises. And she was bragging about them. She was showing them off for the camera. And saying it was from rough intimacy. I don't know if anybody remembers that, if you guys were around for that, but that happened. She would come on camera and say, look, I was involved in some rough play with Natter. And she was very proud of it. She showed it off for the camera. We saw bruises on her chest, on her, her arms. And it wasn't a bust then. It wasn't. They were good with each other. They were doing things together, of which I cannot say, but they seemed to be of a rough nature and foodie wasn't ashamed. She wasn't traumatized. She was showing it off with the camera. And then when she got mad at Natter, suddenly it switched around to where he was doing things to her. And oh, she's scared of him and the black eyed rage and paper clips and all this other crap. Isn't it funny how in the beginning, when she was showing the bruises, she was proud of them. She was very proud of them. Look what happened to me. Look what me and Natter did. Look, he's so passionate, blah, blah, blah. But then when she would get mad at him, she would turn it around and use that as a topic of conversation to gain sympathy and profit from people. And that's why I call her a victim for pay and a victim for views. You can't sit there and say, I'm enjoying something one minute and then say it's traumatizing the next. And then go back to that person over and over again with no fear, spend time around with them in a room alone with no fear and even go so far as to provoke them with no fear. That looks weird to me. And a bit traumatic. And then what does she do instead of, you know, apologizing and being, you know, uh, apologetic about it? She's defensive when she was wrong and she turns, tries to turn it on me. And not only that, she then goes and makes a hate channel and, and calls me every name under the book. And then Chantal, if you are a person and you're going to a friend and you are saying things to them that get them alarmed, scary things saying that somebody is hurting you and i don't know exactly what you said to shannon but it must have been severe enough and alarming enough that she wanted to talk to you and so she came on your channel and she said what she said and then you got mad she heard from you things that suggested you were being hurt that then might lead to other things and she cared about you and you were angry because you said things to her, maybe things that were true, maybe things that were not true, but you said things to her. You started that whole thing by saying those things to her. If you're a friend listening to a friend and they're saying that somebody is hurting them severely, what are you going to do? As a friend, you're going to care. You're going to be alarmed. You're going to be scared for them. That's what you're going to feel. And you might act on that. She cared about you. Joins forces with the person I hate the most in the world. So like, what? what how is that? Like, uh, anyway, it's ridiculous. So yeah, we're just going to let them be hypocrites. Let's just do our content and whatever. Like, just do us. Let's just bees. You know? Because bees in... By the way, foodie, if you're trying to change your life, if you're trying to make positive change, drop that word from your vocabulary. Bees. Because what does bees mean? It means misbehaving. And if you're trying to do some adulting, you don't need to be misbehaving anymore. You're almost 40 years old. It's time to stop misbehaving. Oh, I have, um, yeah, I have more story times. Who does that? I know. I know, Andre Marie, during my live stream, like, if you're a friend, you have to, like, my hair's getting out of control, by the way. As I recall, 
unless I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, please somebody correct me. The story that I remember was that she tried to get in touch with Chantal privately. Chantal wasn't picking up the phone. So Shannon, knowing that Foodie does live streams, that she would be there, she had to talk to her through the live stream. And that's when everything blew up. But she did try to talk to you privately first, and you did not answer the phone, Foodie. What? You should be coming to me directly, you know? She did. She tried to call you. You weren't answering her calls. And like, like I can't believe that. It's just ridiculous. And it just shows you in life, like, you never know who's going to be your true friend, who's going to stick around. She was scared for you. One woman telling another woman that they have somebody in their life that is doing physical harm to them. You're going to be scared for them. You're going to be concerned for them. And you might want to step in and stop that hurt before it goes too far. Reason doesn't need a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't need a reason. That's true. There's no reason. <laughs> yeah, Mimi, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, nothing surprises me anymore. So, so yeah, like I said, the gym is okay. It's just the effort. It's hard right now, especially when you just mentally don't feel well. Um, just ignore them and do your thing. It's toxic, toxic AF these days in this community. People wishing each other to die... And, I, and if anyone throws that in my face, oh, well, you wished not her to get hung. Yeah, well, he was abusing me, okay? So Again, I'm going to throw this in there. And I've said this before. None of us were in the room at any given time when Chantal and Natter were interacting with each other. And since she is a liar and he's a liar, you can't really look at either one of them for the complete truth. Foodie has said on her own live streams that she is verbally abusive. She's admitted that more than once. And she's also said she's got an anger problem. So she keeps painting this half picture of he hurt me. It's all his fault. Keep looking over there at him. He's the bad one. But the real picture, the complete picture. I don't know what all is going on with Natter. I know he's a scumbag. I know he's a grifter and a scammer and a liar. And his YouTube channel is all about basically grifting women, coming in contact with women, getting money off of women. It's not about the cooking, in my opinion. It's about having a public platform to talk to women and to grift and scam women. If it were about the cooking, he would improve his cooking, the presentation, the food, the recipes, but it's obviously not because his cooking is trash. He doesn't care about the cooking for a reason because that's not the main objective. It's about talking to women and getting money off of them and whatever else. But back to you, foodie, back to you. I think if there was harm going on between the two of you, it wasn't just one-sided. I don't think you're an innocent victim. I think you might have hurt him as well. Certainly verbally, possibly physically. I think it went back and forth, perhaps. I think there's two guilty parties here, not just one. I'm not sticking up for Nat or saying that. I don't like the guy. He's a scumbag. But let's look at the whole picture. Let's look at all of it, all the details. Not you cloaking one side to make yourself look better. I think you had an active role in that. Very much. We see how your mouth gets overloaded. Who knows what happened between you and Natter. So you're not the victim, ma'am. You never were. A victim means you're, the, you're in a circumstance that is beyond your control. You had control. You made the choice to be around Natter each and every time, to spend time with him, to spend money on him, to buy his groceries, to pay for his internet, his phone, to buy him an iPad, to buy him an iPhone, to buy him clothes, to put him on YouTube in front of people. He was a bad person, yet you set him up with a channel to talk to other women. Again, why would you do that? If he was a bad person, why would you put him in front of other women? 
Why would you even think of that? But you did that because you wanted to control him. You thought you could. All of that back and forth between the two of you, that was you guys playing tug of war with control. Who can control who? Who can manipulate who? And we watched it all. But you were never an innocent victim. As much as you try to paint yourself out to be, you try to treat victimhood like a badge, and you want to put it on your sleeve and wear it, you're not a victim. You never were. Ever. And you're never going to be. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> like, give me a break. Not the same at all. He did something to me directly. These people, these are all online people that do nothing to you. Like, just log off. In trouble, <clears throat> Inshallah. Anyway. Um... <clears throat> The minute you put your hands on a woman, you're a piece of crap coward and you're not a man. You're a mesquin little boy. And let me remind you of something else you said, Foodie. Again, let's go back in the time machine. Remember that night you were in Natter's bedroom? I forget the name of the live, but you were in Natter's bedroom. You had the sheet wrapped around you. And somebody in your audience asked you the question, have you ever thought about Natter leaving you for another woman? Perhaps someone with more money. Your honest answer was, I think about that all the time. And then you said something very interesting that I paid attention to. You said, I've got a plan. I'm not as stupid as you guys think. Trust, something about an Aries. You said that. The moment that you said that, I knew exactly what you were going to do. That if he ever tried to leave or find another woman, you were going to use his criminal past against him. And you did. You went to the cops, didn't you? Yeah, you did. You're going to try to, in essence, hold him hostage to where he would never leave. You were going to threaten him, perhaps blackmail him. You were going to threaten legal action on him. You did that. Try to use his criminal past against him to force him to stay. What a way to keep a man with you, foodie. Force them to stay rather than give them the choice to leave or to stay. But that's how you play the game. You're not about giving the guys in your life a choice to be with you or not. It's about I'm going to do what I need to do to control this person and manipulate this person to be my my side because I know how foul I am. I know how revolting I am and I don't care. I'm not going to change myself. I'm just going to find guys that are hurting for money and I'm going to use my money to manipulate them to be with me because that's what I want because I'm just that selfish and soulless. I don't care what the other person wants. It's all about what I want. And if it makes me happy, that's all that matters. Disgusting. That's it. End of. Okay, I have another story time between my rage here. All right, another story time. <laughs> this, was this isn't a rage. I've seen you really mad. This isn't a rage. If you were really a raging foodie, you would go off and off and off and not stop. If you're sitting here giggling and laughing and eating, you're not raging. Because one thing I do know about you as a food addict, you eat to comfort yourself. You eat to calm yourself down. So if you're sitting there eating, you're not really going to get mad, are you? You're calming yourself down to keep from raging. You know, food is a comforting thing for you. So calling this a rage is nonsense. It's not a rage. This is a cute one. It's about Howie. So I was like giving him his treats before I went to lay down. <clears throat> yeah, it's upsetting that so many folks out there wish harm upon another human being they never met. I know, for a few internet bucks? Really? And it's a shame how you take your VIBs and when you're mad at them, when it suits you, you will shame them and embarrass them on your live streams or on a community post. You use your public forum to shame people. How about that? You know, case in point, using your community post to talk about FFG. So there's that. <laughs> LD and Joey. 
Wake up in the morning, gotta shake the feeling, I gotta face a day of school. California, I don't know, it's all a mess. Nobody, no one cares that this person is a, a fat hypocrite. Like, honestly, number one, she has the nerve to call um, Salah anything and say anything of like, oh, as if, what are you going to do with a 29-year-old? You're lusting over a 22-year-old like a psycho. Like, are you serious? Like, people, you don't hear yourself or what? Anyway. Um, but yeah, there's always going to be crappy crap people just like this online. And I'm looking at the biggest crappy crap person ever on YouTube. And YouTube should never have given you your channel back. Never. And so, whatever. And they want attention. They live for it. They get a hard on. Ah, ha, ha. Not you. Not you wanting to be the center of the universe. Saying they want attention. Ma'am, you can't stay off of YouTube. This is where you get your attention. You threw everything of yourself into the character Foodie Beauty. And you saved nothing for the person, Chantal Marie. That's why... The person, Chantal Marie, has such a messed up life because you devoted everything to this online character called Foodie Beauty. And one thing you got to realize, ma'am, if this is a character, if this is the persona for YouTube, like with any actor or actress that gets on stage, at some point you got to get off stage. You got to put your street clothes on. You got to walk out of the theater and go live real life. It's healthy. It's a balance. Your problem is that you don't want to get off freaking stage. You don't want to take the cue that it's time to go. And just go live. You're on YouTube. What does Foodie Beauty have? Foodie Beauty has an audience. Foodie Beauty makes a paycheck. Foodie Beauty can take that paycheck and go pay people to be with her off camera. When the camera is completely turned off, Chantal Marie has nothing. Nobody wants to talk to Chantal Marie. She has no friends. She has no social interaction. She has no hobbies. She has no interest. She has no life. That's why you're constantly on YouTube. You have no life beyond YouTube. Foodie Beauty has a life. Chantal Marie doesn't. That's why your life is messed up. You want to be in character 24-7. You just don't want to live after the character is over. Oh, not for it. So whatever. <clears throat> Faking that police raid? I don't know any of that. LD, really? Someone faked a police raid? Ew. Same. Yeah. Um, okay, back to the Harry story time. So, <clears throat> basically, and I'm like, my heart, like, my stomach, my heart dropped into my stomach, and I was like, oh, no, 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 because I was like, no, I don't want to see this rat. It's going to freak me out. How big is it? You know, to look in the dark. We're skipping past all this. Who cares about, no disrespect to Harry the hamster, but it just, it's disgusting to me. She's turning the hamster into content. Bye, foodie. I see a little rodent so stay tuned i'll try to um put out like whatever i can at the gym but maybe just progress maybe not maybe not maybe don't film yourself at the gym maybe disrespectful to other people videos and like the locker room and maybe some extra what no absolutely not no 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 not the locker room no ma'am no no you will not foodie locker room people are in there naked and changing in their clothes no ma'am no ma'am if there's a possibility of other people going in there changing in there don't you dare exercises in like a private room but in the main gym i can't really film so well you shouldn't be filming in the locker room either you don't know who's gonna walk up in there and take their clothes off and you are not careful with the camera don't do it that is so you like to use the word invasive
let me throw it back at you. That would be invasive. That'd be an invasion of somebody's privacy. Don't do it, foodie. But I usually go like at night, late at night. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Somebody else might be coming up in there to work out late. Don't do it. Way after iftar. Or is she just trying to find another location to film in where there won't be anybody else around? I mean, we've seen plenty of the power lines and the beaches and, and stuff at night. Is she just trying to find another location where there won't be anybody else around that would point to different content? Is she just trying to find a location where nobody else is going to be? Because the locker room ain't it, Fody. Um. You never were fit for public shopping, the poor Costco scooter. Yeah, I didn't realize that I was like straining and I thought it was a mechanical defect, just like the ATV. <laughs> I'm on it and it's like, and then Salah goes on it and it's like, zoom, zoom. yeah, well, that's because scooters and ATVs, I'm not trying to be rude here. They do have a weight limit, foodie. And the one that you were on that day had a weight limit of, I believe it was about was it 200 pounds or 300 pounds? So if you were on the scooter and it was acting like that, that means you're way over the weight limit. That's not me fat shaming. That's just me giving you facts. That was the same situation when you were on the scooter at the store. They have a weight limit also. Zing, zing, zing. <laughs> elliptical. Actually, I don't even do the elliptical because I'm not there yet. I'm scared of it. It's so hard. Anyways. So I left my phone, put my phone down to check like the, like some of the equipment and stuff. And then I left the section to go look at the shoes. And while I'm in the shoes, I'm like, okay, I'm going to film this part. I'm like, where's my phone? And my, again, my heart dropped in my stomach. And I was like, no way, no way, no way. This is getting me really angry. So this monster is taking her phone into a lady's gym. And just looking for places where she can film stuff. Like in a corner or something. I'm horrified by this. Because who knows what she's going to show on her channel. Foodie, listen to me. That's invasive. The ladies are going there to work out. They don't want to be shown on YouTube. And I don't know how they're going to be dressed... But if they're not going to be dressed in a modest way, if their faces are going to be shown, you should not be showing that. And if you film stuff in a gym and you get caught, you could go to jail. Do you understand me? That's invasion of privacy. Screw around and find out. <clears throat> Peggy Sweet. Hi, Peggy Sweet. How's it going? Thank you. It's going. How's it going? Tell mom, what took you feck? <laughs> I didn't weigh myself. I didn't think to. I'm stupid. I didn't check. I didn't see a scale, but I'm going to check today. Um, Which I won't know my original weight because, yeah, because I've already been to the gym and, the, and been fasting and eating less. Although for some reason I feel hungry and like I want to smash this entire dinner, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I hate restraining myself. Why can't we just be fat? I'm kidding. Anyway. I can't. I know. It's miser It's miserable being fat. It's miserable being hungry. What can we do, right? All right. So that's the first thing. I'm like, oh, no. So Salah runs back to the section. Thank goodness, because here it's like haram to steal, right? So <laughs> he's like, people usually report stolen items. It's not usual, you know. So <clears throat> which you could look up like the crime rates. They're not like too bad. They're not high here. So anyway, all that to say, you know, my ring got stolen because I was an international airport. That's what I think. You will get there. Thanks, Joey, for your encouragement. Thank you. You go, Beezers are very positive. I love it. Um, so the security guard had the phone. I was so happy. You know, like, so we're almost an hour into this live stream. And so far, the topics of conversation are things that she's discussed a hundred times before. There's nothing new here. 
And can I just say to my audience respectfully, for those who watch React videos, if perhaps you get a bit bored of hearing about the same things over and over, I understand. Repetition, especially of these topics, it's, it's boring, it's repetitive, but it's Foodie's fault. Because if she brought new topics to the table, if she showed us new things, there'd be more to talk about. There would be fresh subjects, things that we've never heard before. But she keeps talking about the same crap over and over. And when she says something, we have to react to it because that's what we do. We're reactors. So apologies if it's a bit repetitive. Blame Chantal. Did I learn my lesson after this? No. <laughs> after the shoe section and after losing my phone the first time, we go to the towels. I put the phone on the top of the towel shelf to look at the different towels and see the sizes. And I'm about to walk away to go to the next section. And some guy was like, hey, is this your phone? <laughs> Remember? No, what the? It's like a, uh, how do you tell you in English? I have a hard time believing that Chantal will leave her phone anywhere. She lives for her phone. I'm like a child. <laughs> no, it's something like, or, you know, like I used to just do whatever freedom to just like, you know, but I mean, it is good to have public etiquette. I'm not like dissing it because obviously like that's how people should behave in public. <sighs> Anyways. So that was mortifying. Yeah. Thanks Peggy. <laughs> And welcome, welcome. Oh, now I gotta clean all this up. That's another thing. After cooking a huge meal, you spend forever cooking a huge meal and then you have to clean. That's life. That's adulthood. In other words. <laughs> uh, maybe not cook a huge meal, maybe cook smaller meals. Maybe use the Instapot or Crock Pot to cook stuff for you, and then it's easy cleanup. I mean, if you got a small place, you got to be smart with what you bring in your home and how you use it. Ah, uh, there's always something to complain about. So there's like seven minutes left for it to be one hour. So I'll make it one hour because I like even numbers. Water aerobics is great for fat people. I know. Yeah. That's true. I mean, she's of a bigger size. Uh, swimming would be good for her. It would help her from injuring her back. So swimming would be a great exercise for Chantal, be a great way to build up stamina in her arms and her legs and her core, but yet she shies away from it. There's this machine. <clears throat> you don't have ticks anymore? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's something that somebody pointed out today. And I'm like, you're right. You're absolutely right. Isn't that something? Isn't that funny that she had ticks before, but she doesn't have them now? So what was causing the ticks before? Was it the rugs or was she faking it? Could be a combination of both. But isn't it funny how her ticks have disappeared? Sometimes I tick my nose. Um, you hold onto it like this and you kneel on it, okay? And then with your body, it's like weighted. You pick your weight, you swing it, you move it, you move your body like this. It's so weird. <clears throat> Did you turn the AC up or down? Oh. Cool. <laughs> He's shivering, poor guy. Poor guy. Are you coming to say hi? Yeah. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. <sighs> We're going to go in like a few minutes anyways. No, you're not, because this live stream went on for another half hour. Shh. You lied. See, Chantal lies. I see shit. And Salah's got a brand new shirt. I wonder who bought him that. He looks good in green. It's not green. It's like yellow green. Dark yellow, maybe. Ne neon, you know, bright. Oh, okay, okay. We call it neon, yeah. <sighs> Fa facial hair makes men look better. Party club is close. Thank you, Piggy. Do you like the happy ending? <laughs> yes, Phil. <laughs> that means something else. I don't think he knows what that means, but yeah, everyone likes a happy ending. <laughs> What's mean? Hold on.
There's no happy ending in that house. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. You know he don't touch her. So. Yep. For, her, for her birthday, all he did was kiss the top of her head, and he didn't even kiss her, the skin on her forehead. He kissed the hijab fabric. There's no happy ending going on over there. Anything you want to say? I don't know. <laughs> he avoids contact with Chantal. He don't want to touch her. <laughs> Before we get off of here in like a couple Not that I blame him. Couple minutes. Stay tuned for the gym vlog. Like ball. Because I miss him. So I miss them so bad. But I have a picture I can put on my community post to show you guys. He looks really cute and happy. So I can't see you. I broke. She says, oh, I miss the cats so much. No, you don't. Those cats are where they need to be. And they're being well taken care of. And I'm happy for that. I'm really, really happy for that. They they deserve the happy ending. They deserve the fairy tale. They earned it. Not you, though. I know. That's okay. <laughs> no, I have to. Because, babe, I have to hide my sideburns. Because my hair's getting out of control. No, it's not. I've been using rinse. Whenever I make rice, I put the leftover rice water in a container and I put it in the fridge. And then whenever I shower, mm. I use it for my hair and it makes it a bit shiny. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. And I've been eating my vitamins and my collagen and stuff like this. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yes. Does Salah let Harry sleep on his soft beard at <laughs> night? Yeah, you do. They're hot. <clears throat> Thank you, babe. They love me the most. You're welcome, babe. You know, even if she was using the hijab to cover her hair, you don't have to have the hijab almost to the, your eyelids. I've seen the ladies in that country wear the hijabs to where their hair is covered up and they have more hair than Chantal. They don't necessarily have to have the hijab down to eye level to do it either. She, she doesn't have that much hair. Okay. I swear Arthur was just playing two roles with his, like a gag kind of thing, you know? Mm. <coughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> the Degrassi stuff. Thank you, run around, Sue. I'm trying and I love it, but I have a blemish. <laughs> and this is no filters. My skin is like- You're a liar. You've got filters on. You may not have them dialed down to the max degree, but you've still got filters. Ma'am, 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 you've got a skin smoothing filter on. And we know this because, and this is not me throwing shade at you for having this condition. You have rosacea on your cheeks. You've got, you, your cheeks are very red. Even with the filter on, I can still see that. You've also got face blemishes that are showing through the filter. Your skin does not naturally look like that. You've got the skin smoothing filter on. You've got a little bit of the contour filter and you've got the eye widening filter to make your eyes bigger. And you're also using another filter to change the color of your eyes. And yes, you can do that y'all. Her eyes are chocolate brown, not hazel green. So filters where? Filters who? Filters everywhere. Looking more blurred. I love it. <laughs> Themselves on like triggering lol cow. Like who are you calling a cow? I'm sorry, but most of these women are obese themselves and need to hit the gym as well. Like seriously. <laughs> Chantal, I've seen some of the ladies and gentlemen of this community. Many of them are not super morbidly obese. You are super morbidly obese. But even if they were, no one is as vile as you. See, it's not about body size. It's about who you are as a person overall. The sum of your parts, if you will. The sum of your parts is vile. You would still be vile if you were 100 pounds or 120 pounds. In fact, you might be even more vile because you would be one of those that, okay, you're super morbidly obese now. If you drop down to say 100 pounds or 200 pounds, 
you would be more arrogant, more cocky, more cruel than what you are now. You'd be so full of yourself, no one would be able to stand you. You would go the other way. You might shame people of a bigger size. Look at them, they're so big. You're judging the reactors and saying that we're super morbidly obese when a lot of us are not. But even if we were, which we're not, you're 500 plus pounds. You yell and scream about fat shaming all day. Fat shaming. So by poking a finger at the reactors and saying we're 500 plus pounds or super morbidly obese, aren't you fat shaming? Yeah, you are. Do not come for people when you're the same way. It's just so weird. It's projecting. Classic case. I believe there's a football on the field because Foodie keeps moving the goalpost. Mental abuse. It's disgusting. It, it is. And they think, well, you're online. Yeah. You should handle it. No, these people don't do anything to you. They just live their lives. And you come for them for no reason. Just and we live our life. We do our reactions of you. You don't have to comment. You don't have to get mad about it. You don't have to watch us. You choose to do that. So you live your life and we'll live our life. Do whatever content you want. Make your money. We'll do the same. Just for your own entertainment, it's disgusting. I don't agree with that at all. People think it's funny. Ha ha. Like, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> like yeah but for example has fatty in every thumbnail she does okay i recently saw that um but telling on herself again so you watch yaba do you she has fatty in every thumbnail that means you're looking at every thumbnail you're telling on yourself telling on yourself that means you've gone to her channel you've looked at all the thumbnails what did i say about being a busy body that's you you're just proving to all of us that all you do all night long is not work on yourself. You're going on YouTube where you shouldn't be. You're making yourself angry. Number one, she's very obese herself. She doesn't even show herself on camera. See, you're contradicting yourself. She's obese herself, but she doesn't show herself on camera. So how do you know she's obese if she doesn't show herself on camera, foodie? Make it make sense. Number two, imagine raising, like, I hope your kids don't grow up to be fat because the fact that you have a legacy of calling other women fat online. Same of Goblin Disgusting. Also. Uh, she hides her face. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And your wife hides her face, Sala. You know, as well as we do, that what you see right now in person does not match what you see on the screen right now. When you're looking at the screen, you know they don't match. So foodie is using a living avatar using those filters yet you're going to criticize people for not coming on camera and showing their real face when she's not even showing her real face doing the world a favor in my opinion the racist witch who called ffg <laughs> yeah. the, the biggest racist in the world Allah, please go back to playing your video game and smoking your shisha you're adding nothing here bro bro you're a paid companion go be a paid companion Go sit down, play your video game. Just go do your thing, okay? Like, are, are you like looking for bonus pay from Foodie? If I back her up, she'll throw me some cash. Is that what's going on here? You're looking for bonus points and bonus pay? Yeah, Islamophobic. By the way, if that's the case, Sala, she don't get paid for another 20 days, bro. Three weeks. So give it a rest right now very much they don't think they are oh no i'm not islamophobic your comments are very islamophobic actually it's i'm disgusting. thinking to to do a like companion against her for islamophobic you know what sala let me just educate you a little bit let me just take a moment and educate you oh as far as the reactors no one is being islamophobic nobody nobody has a problem with islam or anybody who's muslim or the muslim faith so you can't use that as a defense. We're not criticizing the Muslim faith, the Muslim people, the country, none of that. Our criticism is for the person, Chantal, AKA Foodie Beauty, about her actions and her words has nothing to do with the faith or the Muslim people or the country of Islam, none of that. None of that. Can't use that as a defense. 
She claims to be a Muslim woman. But you sit there and listen to her day after day. Be disrespectful. You say nothing. She, she's coming on camera tonight. Doing this live stream. Speaking hatefully. When she shouldn't be. Because it's Ramadan. You're supposed to have good thoughts. Be charitable. All that. She's not doing that here. She's not showing respect to the Muslim people. The Muslim faith. She's not doing none of that. She's being hateful. You got nothing to say on that. But then you want to speak up about the reactors. Saying they're hateful. Look next to you. Look next to you. Just turn around and look next to you. She's hateful. Get a clue. We talk about her for a reason. Has nothing to do with the faith. Has nothing to do with the Muslim people. Has nothing to do with the country. It's her. It's her hateful behavior. It's the words. It's her being offensive and the drama. That's why we talk about her. There's no Islamophobia going on here, sir. She tries to use that as a defense, as a shield, to continue to be offensive and get away with it. She's always looking for shields. Using the fact that she's of a bigger size, using that as a shield. Using the Islamophobia as a shield when she shouldn't be using it. It's disrespectful to the people who really are Muslim. You've chosen to, to defend her because she's your paycheck. Point blank simple. She's how you get paid. So you're going to do whatever you need to do and say whatever you need to say to keep that paycheck coming, ain't you? Well, you're going to find out, sir. You're going to find out what happens to people that don't, that do, that, that they choose to do things that Foodie does not want them to do. Keep going on with this act. Keep doing it. Get paid. But when the moment comes that you want to break away and be free, you'll understand who she really is. You'll understand how wrathful she can be. She's a jealous, insecure, possessive woman, a controlling woman, that once you enter her grasp, she's not going to let you go. You're not going to escape her, not unscathed. The moment you look at her and say, I'm done, she's not going to be done with you. She's going to come on camera and say all kinds of all things, awful things about you. It's going to happen. Understand that. Understand that. You'll see. It's going to happen to you. It's coming. But keep talking her up. Keep buttering her up. Get that money. Get it while it's there because the money's going down. She'll keep lying to you. She'll say and she'll do whatever it takes to keep you there. But the moment the money starts to run dry and you say to yourself, there's not enough money here for me, the juice ain't worth the squeeze, and you try to get away, you're going to find out. What do you think? Like a, like a report? Compagan, like a community of uh, uh, Islamic people to report oh. this lady. This way she is, mm. she is yeah. like, you know, it's, she's abusing Islam. You want to put me in? And also when she put that uh, thumbnail uh, about Ramadan, she said Hamadan. Yeah. Hama is like big. And yeah. Zir. You're making so fun of Islam. She's making exactly. fun on Ramadan. Then after we said that, she changed the thumbnail. Yeah. It's interesting to me that Chantal and Sala, they're insisting on the reactors being respectful of the Muslim people and the Muslim faith. When Chantal herself has no respect. When she comes on camera and she's hateful and she's gluttonous and doing a lot of things are haram. But that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Let me show no respect to the Muslim faith and the Muslim people on camera, but yet insist on other people being respectful. It's so embarrassing, really. Oh, campaign. It's disgusting, plus, yeah. disgusting, vile FFG. Anything about this. Nice. <laughs> she's and, vile. And by the way, she mean it. It's not joke. No, it's not. You can tell. <clears throat> they were bold and Bueller couldn't defend themselves. Well, they have some issues. They always say, I need therapy. They need therapy. You do need therapy, though. You do need it for a lot of issues, but you're never going to get help 
because you're too busy profiting off of your hurt. And you can't heal in the same environment you hurt in. And with you, you're, you got temptations everywhere, especially food. But you're too busy profiting off the hurt to want to heal. Because the hurt is all you got to make money. Any and all problems are profitable for you. Any issues are profitable to you. You are the walking wounded and you'll forever be the walking wounded because that's how you make your money and that's how you get attention. A hundred percent. No, Gary got demonetized because he was saying like uh, that he, his videos are not transformative enough. So if his are not, then neither are FFGs at all, period, 100%. Actually, he is also uh, uh, called me solid. Yeah, for no reason. You saw that? Casually in conversation, uh, like I, casually I, being a I never know that he exists in the world, in the life. Yeah. And I didn't... Allah, be quiet. Talk about him. Yeah. Then he, he, money, uh, he's uh, awesome, he's quiet. Lusting like a, a pig over him. She's <laughs> I, disgusting. Like, this guy needs to stay away from her. <laughs> Why he would associate with run, a bully? Run, run. Hey, foodie, I'm going to bring this up. You're over there talking about FFG and her audience and what they do. Let me just bring this up because I can. Do you remember going on Omegle? I remember. I remember you going on Omegle and talking to men that were far too young for you. And you were doing it while dressed in lingerie. Remember that? I think that's disgusting. That a woman who's nearly 40 years old getting on Omegle and talking to men that are much too young for her, dressed in almost nothing. How dare you? Ew. Gross. Yeah, you're going to talk about somebody, a reactor? And they're just reacting to somebody making content. Mama, shut up. You got no room to talk. Run, guys. run! If you're watching, <laughs> run. She says something and she laughs loudly. Yeah, she's gross. For nothing. She laughs like an 80 year old <laughs> grandpa. You can hear BBJ in her house. Yeah, exactly. She's disgusting voice I ever heard in my life. Shut up, Sala. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disgusting voice. They all have grout. She they has no boyfriend. Like Actually, it's so obvious. Exactly. Uh, community tab, yeah. <laughs> they all have disgusting voices. And you don't? You're nearly 40 years old and you're trying to talk like a valley girl? Please. Please. Grow out of that phase. <laughs> and you talk in that baby voice when you want something and you screech and you use the word Beezer. You're nearly 40 years old and you came up with Beezer? Embarrassing. I'm taking your mature woman card away from you right now. You're embarrassing to all mature women. Go away. A Muppet Winnie prefers to be. She does. She looks like a garbage pail kid, like failed garbage pail kid. And like she's hideous, like in every way, in and out. And you are? You, of all people, calling somebody hideous. You. Really, you? Challenge. Come on, camera, without those filters, foodie. Come on, camera, without those filters. Because even if you are a raving beauty queen, you'd still be hideous. Your inside is so ugly. You could eat every bit of makeup in Sephora and still be ugly inside. There's no amount of makeup that could fix that kind of ugly. There's no surgeon in the world that could fix it. Your kind of ugly is unfixable. Unfixable. You're putrid. You're rotten. You're a walking sewer. <laughs> low, low. And honestly, like, it's just, like, so sad and disgusting. I, I don't know. What, this one? <laughs> then stop watching her. You say all these horrible things about her. Then stop watching her. Stop going to her channel, you idiot. Make it make sense. You hate these people, yet you watch them. And you know what? That's a great picture, foodie. That is so great. Oh, oops, I messed up. Sorry, my bad. I need a picture for my thumbnail. Yes, I do. That's a great picture, foodie. I mean, you are so photogenic, I'll give you that. I will give you that, ma'am. That's a great photo right there, boom. Yes, I have the photo for my thumbnail. 
Continue. Mimi? A Muppet, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you what a Muppet is after. Anyway. Um, whatever. These people make me laugh, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, really. But, been... but when they come for the racist against the religion, talking about, you know, it's like... Um, Saying bad, yeah, verbal abuse of of uh, against the uh, the religion is yeah. very bad. It's shame, and the people who uh, support this and don't say anything about it, they are no comment about it. Yeah, really. you, again, you need to shut up, Salah. You are with the foulest woman, and I use that term loosely, woman on YouTube. You sold your soul for a paycheck, bro. To hang out with this. You thought this was your golden road to freedom, to fortune, this one right here. And you're finding out that it ain't the case, but you're sticking around anyway because you're getting paid and you don't have to work. And you got a problem with us. We still have our souls. You sold yours for a YouTube paycheck. How sad. But enjoy your misery. You invited it. You wanted it. Have it. Yeah, maybe I should use my TikTok platform to out that. To out that. To out there. Yeah, good luck with that. Trying to build up TikTok. Your disgusting behavior because it's not even equal, honestly. I don't know how people support this file. <clears throat> Did you see her on Shannon's, Shannon's live? Mm -hmm. You don't have to wonder, Sala. That's not part of your job description. Just sit quietly, echo what she says, and get paid. That's all you got to do. Yeah, I seen like that. I see. Yeah, I seen enough of her face. She looks like a grandfather, like a bloated grandfather. I don't know how she has the nerve to comment on anyone else's anyone else's looks. Hi, Glam Girl. Night breeze. <laughs> Stop it. It's like they're trying to make a new version of Night breeze. Why did she kill her second dog? No, the dog's not off limits because you brought my cat into this. So. Like really, like she killed like two dogs on row, like in one year, two dogs. Yeah, she let the one dog. It was terminally ill. She let it suffer, and like, <sighs> what pet owner who loves their pets or loves animals would talk like this? Who would do this? How can you be someone? that owned a pet for 16, 18 years, or two pets for that long. How can you sit there and take the unfortunate demise of two of somebody else's pets that they love dearly? They did everything they could do to take care of them and try to weaponize that and throw that in their face. Only a heartless beast like Foodie. And she just tries to use anything she could think of to hurt someone, even things that you really shouldn't use as weapons. Here's the difference between you and French fried girl, foodie. Let me define it for you clearly. Frenchie loves her dogs. She loved her dogs before they passed away, did everything she could do for them. She wasn't neglectful. She didn't let their nails grow into their foot pads. Didn't starve them of food. Didn't force them to live in a filthy, disgusting, putrid environment. Didn't trade her dogs for companionship of a guy that didn't even love her. That was all you. That was you. That is you. You're a neglectful, awful person. You place no importance on anything. If, when it comes to men, you'll let everything go if it means you get five minutes with a man. Even a man that does not going to touch you and not going to love you. Chasing after men that want nothing to do with you, that are not attached to you and will let you go in a heartbeat. You will trade two pets that loved you, that gave you unconditional love, that don't ask nearly as much in return. All they ask is care and love and affection and loyalty. Couldn't give him those things. But you'll give all those things to a man who don't want nothing to do with you and will leave you in a heartbeat. So sad. 
You talk all the time about wanting love, wanting love, wanting love. You had, you had, you had love in your own house, you fool. You had it. BBJ and Sam loved you unconditionally. They saw you in your worst moments and they accepted you. They saw you in all your faults and they accepted you. They embraced you. They looked up to you. How did you repay that priceless love? By abandoning them, by giving them away, by neglecting them, by denying them food, by denying them love, by hurting them. And you know what I think, Fodi? I think at this point in time, you don't deserve love. Because even if you had it, you wouldn't know what to do with it. You would abuse it. You would use it. You would turn it inside out, upside down and backwards and tear it apart. So as far as you being with Sala or any other man doesn't give a crap about you, that is what you deserve. You don't care about people. Therefore, you deserve to be with someone who doesn't care about you. How about that? Forced it on medication. Then the inevitable happened. So sad. <clears throat> and now she's smoking out BBJ, mm. chain smoking. How do you know this? Are you in the house? Do you live there? No. You're making assumptions again and trying to present them as facts. French fried girl said, BBJ does not live with her. Lives with the sister and the sister-in-law and the brother. I believe that. I believe that she said I'm not a cat person, but despite the fact she's not a cat person, she rescued BBJ, her and the brother and the sister-in-law. She did something good. Stop insisting that BBJ's there. She's not. Are you going to roll with that narrative? But even if she were there, what's it to you? You didn't care about the cat when she was there in your care. You left her alone. You pushed her away. You're completely disrespectful to BBJ. You're always shoving her away because Sam was the favorite. I got nothing against Sam. He was an innocent animal too, but there was favoritism in that house. You never gave a crap about BBJ, but now you care to talk about her. Should have cared then. Um, I feel sad for BBJ actually with, yeah, me with too. this vial. I would have never for sure. Anyway, she, uh, then her second dog, she, what did, what did she say who the reason was? Like it had, se it had separation. It was heartbroken from the other one. She will invent any reasons. Yeah. She will create any reason. Yeah. Shut up. Um, shut up. Yeah. We all know it's in her apartment. We can see the animal abuser who yeah. killed two dogs. Shut up. Sala. 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 The woman next to you is a monster. All the things she's done to her pets that are now not her pets. We've seen it all. We saw it in her live streams. That's why we don't like her. That's part of the reason. You're going after somebody and accusing them of something. Look to your right. That one has done the worst. Still, you say nothing to her because she's paying you. In one year and that. Shut up. <laughs> oh, how many months now? And people More than first, six months. yeah, they were waiting so long to be like, it's and you know what? The thing is, Fodi wants everybody to talk. She wants everyone to stop talking about BBJ. Yet she talks about it. She makes it a topic of conversation. The irony, her telling other people, stop talking about BBJ, and yet she continues to talk about it. She keeps bringing it up. Scam, just watch when she gets to Kuwait. Well, guess what? And she will be in jail and she will not enter Kuwait. Uh, but you know what I think, Sala? I think, my opinion, there's a long scam going on here. I think you're in for the long haul. I think there's a big payout at the finish line, whatever it is. I think you're doing the long scam on Chantal. Not that I mind. Because she's scammed plenty of people. She's hurt plenty of people. This might be her karma. It might be. But I think for you to stick around this long and put up with her nonsense, put up with all her gross habits and the fact that she's into this eating and you think it's gross and not touching her, there must be something keeping you there. I just get this feeling, bro. You're around for a reason.
And the reason is money, something connected to money, something beyond immediate money. And you're playing it cool and you're keeping your cool so that she can continue to give you money. But I think you're in for the long haul and you're going to get whatever you need to get from Chantal and you're going to leave. And I'm okay with that. She needs to learn. She needs to learn she can't run around and hurt people and use people. She needs to learn. But you're not around because you love her. We know this. You're around for whatever it is you're looking for. And you're not going to leave until you get what you came for. Hmm? Blah, blah. Right. So pathetic. Losers. I'm a celebrity here, apparently. Look who is the who. No, like usually, and I have to like learn not to like give in because then they get like content for a whole month and then they use it against me. Like that's what they do. They poke the bear, they poke people. No, no, you poke yourself. You run around, you look at things, you poke yourself. We don't even have to pick up sticks and poke you. You poke yourself. They emotionally push people to an edge and then they Oh, please. Oh, please. You know what? Exhibit A. Y'all look at this chat. Look at it. Do you see any reactors in here? Do you see any reactors in our VIB chat? Look, look, evidence right here. Do you see anything? Nothing. You guys can go to the whole chat. It's right here. You won't see a single reactor all up in there. So how are we bothering Chantal? If she's got VIB chat and we're not in there, we're not bothering her during her live chats. How are we harassing her? How can we possibly harass this woman if we're not in her chat, we're not talking to her. How are we harassing her? Yet she goes on other people's chats under sock accounts and she makes a point to say things. So who's harassing who? They get gleeful when people react back. It's so disgusting. Yeah. Uh, babe, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 10.30. Yeah, okay, my phone. it's time to go. Goodbye. Anyway. So that's my react to Foodie Beauties live. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know it was a bit of a long one tonight, but hey, she's been gone for a while. So there it is. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And thank you so much for being here. Hope you've had a great night and I will see you later. Bye-bye.